Hello and welcome to podcast number 61. 61. 61. We're going to be catching up with the recent film and TV shows we've watched before going over the latest film news. In the second part of the podcast, we're going to be asking that age-old film question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Mm, and then in the third final. part of the podcast, we will be answering your questions. Ian, Andy... Great to have you here. Yeah, Merry How Christmas, man. Oh, man. Well, obviously, I missed the last podcast because I was ill as fuck. Are you feeling better? I am, I am feeling better. It, it took its toll on me. And I, obviously, I want to slap myself on the back for taking the bite in the bullet and not coming to the podcast last time and fucking... We appreciate you not all, coughing all, into the yeah, for everybody. I was fucking bad. Thanks, you know, when you're coughing and then all of a sudden you're like, hmm, why have I got a mouthful of phlegm? Where's that come from? And you're just like... Don't go out the house. Well, I was enjoying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it only happens like once a year. I always, always, always towards the end of November, just before December, I get a cold because the immune system, it's all round there. And, you know, for a second, I thought it was COVID. Unfortunately, it wasn't. So I stuck a stick up my nose for nothing. Dude, yeah, that was dude, fun. Just do what I do. It's like, oh, I might have COVID. Well, I have to eat everything to make sure I can taste. <laughs> right. So just open the fridge, dude. I That's a COVID I test. Did, I, hey. I, was, I was at home for two days. It was pretty nice. You know, I tried to watch some stuff, but I just... Just couldn't. But that, at the same time, I had my birthday. Got some pretty good shit. I awesome. got Red Dead Redemption from Gary for the Switch, which I've been playing recently. Man, the five finger fillet is still hard as fuck. Yeah. Oh, that's an impossible <laughs> fucking challenge. Trying to fucking, yeah, 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 yeah. trying to copy the fucking symbols and just, and then every now and again, you're just watching the knife jam into the finger. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's the sound effect as well, isn't it? It's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Loving revisiting all of the old stuff down in, obviously, Armadillo and Tumbleweed, just coming off the back of Red Dead Redemption 2. Nice. I got AEW Fight Forever from Andy, which was pretty sweet. Um, luckily, CM Punk hasn't left my game. <laughs> and got to the other oh, I've got to buy WWE 2K23. Yeah, over there. need to play around. But that's, that's also why I needed to buy it because it's kind of like a nostalgia trip. This is AEW's first video game. And it's it immediately least, out of date. And it's immediately out of date. <laughs> like all wrestling games all the Three time. or four of their top stars in that game who were the top Are stars Are they on the, the actual time. cover of the game? Jay, yeah. Jay Cargill's on there. Jay Cargill's on there. Yeah. Cody Rhodes is on there. CM Punk's <laughs> on there. All three of them have gone to WWE so now. It's the same with these sports games. Um, that's that's going to be fun. Uh, That's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Obviously, Lin I, I said before, Linda got me the Metal Gear Solid collection for the Switch. That's so I've been awesome. playing through that. Um, she's she's because it's obviously December now, so we can talk about Christmas. I uh, convinced her to get me the Batman trilogy for the Switch oh. for Christmas oh, that's as just, well. Yeah, that's just that's an <coughs> oh, excuse me, that's an awesome collection. A lot of backlash coming back that people are like, "Oh, Arkham Knight shit." I'm like, "It was shit when it came out." You know, well, I frame rate. I liked Arkham Knight. Like like I just no, no, everyone, no, no, everyone no. shit on the Batmobile section. The gameplay. So like, yeah. The gameplay. It could have been better, but it was still fun. The gameplay, when the game first came out, you know, it didn't look as well. It didn't run as well as Arkham City. The the same with this port. It's kind of like they've just ported that version over. And it's not running. People were wanting well, it I to I mean, run. I've got it on my Xbox Series X, so I guess I can play it on the Switch as well. I just put it on my Xbox and squint my eyes with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. look exactly the same. Oh, it's well, just like the Switch I version. mean, you can, you can put the Xbox <laughs> on like a table and just carry around with it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I've been doing that. Linda wanted to go through the Star Trek trilogy recently, and I realised I've gone to that age. What, the remake the, trilogy? The originals. Oh. Right, because we watched... more than a trilogy, yeah, say, wait a minute. Well, we watched Star Trek Beyond, and she wanted... Sorry, she wanted to go through the original series and because we got ill all I wanted to do was watch Star Trek motion picture and sleep nice so just on a film on a loop just, just put it on <laughs> the background because it's basically a fucking screen it's, it's, not it's, 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 that it's, movie it's, is just glory shots of the Enterprise while you were boom but yeah. you know not not trying to sound old but taking into account that I am old um, I didn't want to watch Rafa Khan love Rafa Khan it's like Has the best one. one it yeah. is but you know what I wanted to watch Final Frontier when he meets God yeah, I like that and, one too. And, and Undiscovered Country, because I kind of related a little bit more to Kirk and Spock at that point, where they're <laughs> reaching that age, where they're like, man, what are we going to do yeah. that age now? Let's like, go I, find God. I can't skateboard anymore. <laughs> I couldn't skateboard before. I was going to say, I've never seen you fucking skateboard. <laughs> so, yeah, that was kind of my mum. How was yeah, you? You guys been? Um, yeah, I, just to be fair, since we did the fucking podcast, like it was two weeks like ago, two, like, two, two weeks in between. Happen, but, uh, yeah. Do you know what, though? I... I um, so I was struggling with finding a game to play and I started playing um, because of Spider-Man because I enjoyed it so much I realised 
I'd not played Sunset Overdrive, which was done by Insomniac. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, so I just yeah. chucked that on. I started playing that. And I was like, yeah, this is, you know, yeah, it's a the good zombie... game. zombie... Yeah, it's a fucking just... I barely Frenetic played, to be fair. Yeah, very the crazy. Yeah. And fucking, it's fun. Yeah, it's a good game, man. You can see what, like, even then that they were like, um, you know, a good studio that was like putting some love into their games. Yeah, so yeah. that was cool. Um, I'll tell you what I did watch last night. Because I haven't really watched anything new. I rewatched Hawkeye. Because... Hawkeye is a Christmas series. Christmas series. Okay. Christmas, okay? <laughs> and do you know what I realised is that it was a really underrated series. I still There's so seen it. much more. It, it got kind of pushed to the wayside, I think. Yeah, because, yeah. And look, d- because Overshadowed because of the fatigue uh, was real. Like, the, ex- the fatigue is real at this point as well, you know, when we when we had it. Because it was only last year. Um, I get it. And, you know, there, there'd been like WandaVision and stuff like that. But, dude, Hawkeye's a really solid series when you, when you actually get into watching it and you see like... There's so much that he goes through in that. So much yeah. sort of like that relates to different things. The fucking Kingpin shows up in it, for mm-hmm. God's sake. It's a badass series. So I really enjoyed that. But, um, you know, there, there's like a scene in it where he's talking to Kate about... Um, oh, for one, he's got the best uh, blip scene in it where um, Yolanda goes into like the bathroom in this house. Oh, and from she's fucking... Bl- um, and it just changes. Yeah. yeah, it changes yeah, yeah. because it's her Elizabeth being blipped Pew. and then coming back. Is it Elizabeth right. Pugh? Yeah, Pugh. Yeah, yeah. And um, pew, pew. seeing seeing her come back and just being like, "Fuck, it's five years later." Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was really that was amazing. Really good. There's a shot. scene where Hawkeye's talking to Kate Bishop about, um, like, when he when he basically reveals that he was Ronin, and she's like, "You went around killing people and stuff," because she idolizes him in that, you know. And he's like, "No, I was Ronin, mm-hmm. basically." I'm paraphrasing. Mm. And um, yeah, like the script's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, a lot more extended. Um, no, but she, you know, she's talking about it, and she's like, "Oh, well, you know, you you were." you're doing what you were trained to be, like, you, to, to be a hero. He's like, I was trained to be a weapon. And you're like, fucking hell, yeah, man. Yeah, like, there's was, a lot of real was. world shit yeah. that comes into that. So I actually really enjoyed rewatching it. And it, that fight with Kingpin at the end and the fact that Echo is just sort of like, you know, spoilers. That's out soon. Bang! Fuck you! Just like, you know, murders him, basically. Okay. It's off screen, so it, but essentially, it's like, it's a really strong ending. Echo's dropping soon in a couple of weeks. Yeah, and, and Plus. re-watching that made me actually like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to watch that. That's going to nice. be good. But last night, I watched Little Monsters with what, Fred fuck Savage. With Fred Savage, <laughs> the shit underneath the bed. Yep. Man, that movie's ace. What a fucking great movie. Yeah. Pure childhood joy. Um, the fact that the, I, I didn't realize that Maurice it. was played by Howie you Mandel. You may have seen it like once, but not I may, I remember, still remember it. It's yeah. on Amazon Prime. Oh, Little yeah. Monsters. Go watch it. I watched it on film pure, four like a month ago. Pure he, joy, right? He, the, 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 um, Fred Savage c- keeps seeing like weird things happening in his in his bedroom in his house, and so he sets a trap, and this monster comes out from underneath his bed. Yeah. And there's an, a portal underneath his bed that takes him to Monster World. Yeah. Right. But if the monsters get hit by light, they turn into like freakishly small versions of themselves. Right. Monsters in my pocket. Okay, yeah. I've definitely yeah. not seen it. And um, I <laughs> You've think... You've got, I mean, what's it? His dad is played by fucking, what's his name? Played Harry from Home Alone, you know? Um, oh, fucking... Not Joe Pesci. The other one. Oh, uh, um, Howard, Mar- St- Howard, Howard Stern? Stern? Howard Stern? No, um, Daniel Stern? Daniel, Daniel Stern. 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 Daniel Stern. Stern. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the... Ironically, the fucking big brother Buzz from Home Alone is in it as well. Shit, I might need to rewatch it again. See yeah. how many people from Home Alone. Are in <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, that was that was just fun. So yeah, that's that's basically it. That's Good what we do. Other than that, other than decorating the house mm. and getting stuff ready for Christmas, that's been it. Christmas, cool. Yeah, I kind of worried that we would have a, 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 a only a small catch up section. So I literally went out of my way to watch as much as possible, <laughs> as much as humanly possible mm. in two in that two week period. Uh, the first film that I want to talk about uh, is a film called Circle came out in uh, 2015 okay now ian and i had literally just reviewed a, a kind of horror movie that takes place at one location yeah so i was like you know what it it was a film that i'd already seen before so i needed to watch something else and uh, so i was kind of just looking for other movies of that kind of type that i'd not seen before and i came across circle 2015 i was like well, that's kind of relevant you know more modern than some of the other mm. ones and the premise is that uh uh, 50 people all wake up and they are in a circle, like the film's title. And um, every two minutes, this big uh, ball in front of them basically lets them light up and they can all see these little arrows that point to, you know, they can use their hand and navigate this arrow around the entire room. And right. wherever they, wherever the two minutes ends, whichever arrow they've left it pointing at is that person's vote to who dies next. Oh, okay. And over the course of the movie, every two minutes, literally almost in real time, Next one's dead. Next one's dead. Next How one's dead. How did they die? They literally like a like a I don't know like a thunderbolt of or a ray gun of something just shoots down through the sky and just 
pops, they fall, and then they literally just get sucked off into the black void. They're literally in a black, Sorry. you know, wallless room. Uh, my mind went there and I was just like, <laughs> oh, I so, didn't do it. Yeah, they literally, they're literally they're literally killed void. and dragged off okay, into the void. Okay, that's kind of very and cute. So, like you. Very it cute-ish. kind of yeah, yeah. But like, like literally that, they that, never yeah. leave the room yeah. and they all die that exact same way but it's the fact that everyone in there is all from different walks of life different professions and uh, and it's basically a moral play mm. as to who should be the last one because literally i mean they assume the game ends when there's one person left standing and who's that going to be is it going to be that eight-year-old girl over there mm. or is it going to be the pregnant woman over there or is it going to be the you know the very smart no, person see, over there? No, men in black always taught uh, taught me not to trust yeah, little girls. Yeah, yeah, she or, she shouldn't be there. <laughs> and so yeah, it, it, it's a morality jet. play. And yeah. so yeah, it was it was obviously because it's it, there's some mystery to it because you're like, where are they? Who's doing this? What happened? How did they get there? They've got no memory. They were like, oh, I was driving a car, and then boom, I'm here. You know, and so, but yeah, it's a, so it's a moral play. It's uh, basically a drama in one room. But yeah, I was intrigued by it the whole way. So even cool. though it was like, I always loved the second one location going. thing. Exactly. Right. So when you've got no budget, uh, but you've got a good script, Jeez. yeah, it was a really and a uh, laser from space. Yeah, so yeah, it was. Uh, it was definitely, I'd say, yeah. worth a watch. Uh, next thing that uh, I binged watched was a four part four part docu series called the Enfield Poltergeist. Uh, this was streaming on Apple TV. Oh, yeah. And, Is this the uh, bitch jumping out of bed? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I remember that one. Uh, so it was pretty much the most <laughs> <Great review>. documented... <laughs> pretty, the most documented and thoroughly researched paranormal event... And debunked. ...in human history. And debunked. ...that has been debunked, <laughs> but the still... It may have been debunked, but yet the, the fact that it's still... The story still remains, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, some I people totally still get... believe Blair Witch was a fucking documentary. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah. I, I see. I, I totally remember this shit from when I was a kid because I was t- heavily into the paranormal when I was a kid. And you know, you read in the paper about this fucking the the girl and this pot guys at this house, and I covered. I, I followed it for weeks until ultimately, you know, they went yet. Yeah, it's not they real. faked it. They made up yeah, the voices. They, 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 they made up the voices. Her, ju- you know, her being pulled up in the air isn't her doing it. That's her jumping in the air. They just happened to catch that picture, and I was just like, <clears throat> "Motherfucker, so close, <clears throat> so yeah, close." But uh, the documentary that they've made is isn't really going out to prove or disprove the events. What they've done, yeah, is taken. I mean, the guy that did the all of the investigating um, recorded. I know something like forty hours worth of material yeah, or yeah. more. <clears throat> so what they've done is taken all of the best audio samples of events and then reenacted all of those scenes with actors, whilst playing the actual audio from the recordings. Okay. So all the actors are literally being dubbed over with the actual events. So they're syncing up to yeah. the actual recordings. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's kind of a bit weird seeing this modern. You know, set. You literally see the actors walking around the set, and the camera's like, "Yeah, look, there's no walls here. It's an actual set. We've recreated it." But then they also brought in the actual people that lived it, and literally, it was like a time bomb for them because they were walking around an actual replica of their mm. house. Uh, but yeah, it was you know, it was very slick. Each episode was an hour long. I found it fascinating, even though you, if you don't believe in the event, it's still a fascinating story in the way that the documentary's put together. Uh, it was yeah, it was slick and very very I mean, well done. The event, so, right. the event happened. It's just there was no pot guys. Yeah. That was the problem. Or was there? No, 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 there, no there, wasn't. there wasn't. I mean, they did that BBC One fucking Ghost Watch show. Dude, Ghost Watch was Ghost Watch. That was real. Now that it. shit was real. That, that happened. Shit I watched that it. happen live. Yeah, she fucking banged the pipes on her radio and everything. Th- mm. <laughs> yeah, Parky was freaking out. Fucking, you yeah. know it's got to be real to rattle. Parky. I mean, the fucking the, the whole fucking set on the in the it's BBC, on the BBC, right? They don't fucking, lie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The the cameras. Why would the BBC cover anything up? No, seriously. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Next. Five Nights at Freddy's. Have you guys seen this <laughs> no, one yet? No, but I'm getting the yeah. DVD for Dylan. Oh, spoilers. I'm getting the DVD for Dylan for Christmas. <laughs> Linda, if he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He was the one who asked Get me. Him Get him off the internet. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I mean, uh, Santa. Santa is bringing it. <laughs> honestly, yeah. For me, m- m- meh. Like it, uh, I mean, I've never played this single. Nicholas Cage. It was. It, it really Nicolas was. Cage, I, I mean, I fucking knew it. I, said I, that. I think out of the three movies, the uh, Willy's Wonderland is my favourite of the you know animal and 
uh, electronics coming to life. Even yeah. more so than bananas in the yeah, yeah, bananas I mean, split. That, that fucking sucks. <laughs> you know what? If if you're in the mood for it, you just watch fucking all three of them. Like I you've did. literally got a feature. I only need to watch Five Nights at Freddy's, and then and I've done, done all, all of them. three. Yeah, but like, well, yeah. honestly, the the game lore because you know by There's listening, a lot of game lore. I was listening. I've been listening to Dylan talk about it for like the last five years when he was following fucking Dan TDM and all those other guys on the iPad on YouTube, fucking watching these videos. And he's coming up, I've, I've kind of read the books, I've wikied it myself, I've played some of the game. This is kind of the best movie adaptation they could have done for it, I believe. You know, this is certainly better than Doom, and Resident Evil, and dare I say it, Silent Hills. Wow, it's really clear in a high bar there, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, well, it has to. You I like at, Silent Hill. Yeah, I think Silent Hill is fucking tight. You look I like at the, yeah, I like the movie too. But you look at those names. They, 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 they went to make a Doom movie, and it was fucking bad because it was nothing you're like the game Doom or Doom? Doom Doom okay yeah with The good. Rock yeah, remember yeah, Doom yeah, yeah. with oh, the fucking Rock fucking <laughs> you know Resident Evil I mean, oh he said the thing you, they, fucking six or seven movies have just tripe with Alice at least this guy at least this one had the guy who made the game yeah and had him in the background giving his pointers and yeah. I think I think that's where like because I, I, I firmly believe he went to do this and <laughs> they got Nicolas Cage signed on and then something happened, and that's why Wally's, Wally's Wonderland yeah. happened. Because I think Nicolas Cage was like, nah, I'm Nicolas Cage. I just want to kill all the fucking animatronics. And he's <laughs> I like, I want to read a script. And you know, and the, <laughs> the guy behind Five Nights at Freddy's was like, no, because that will completely kill my fucking franchise. And Nicolas Cage is like, yeah, but I'm Nicolas Cage. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you, you know, I want on my way. And so we've got this film. We've got the. It stars the guy who played as Peter from fucking. Um, Hunger Games. Oh, okay. I know you. You know, he, he's great. I don't, don't, I don't know, know his name. name. I know what you mean. But he's, he's fucking great. He's been in a lot of shit. He's um, been through Matthew the Hunger L- Games, dude. Matthew Lillard yeah. was in it Lillard. as well. Yeah, yeah. Willard, That's yeah. sweet. Yeah. Oh, it's a good cast then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a fairly good How cast. Um, mediocre. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kill wise, I've heard the kills are just not there, but that's because of the audience. It had some to... evocative imagery that I'm like, because you know, I've seen some of the games getting played. I'm like, mm. okay, yeah, they've taken that, that works, they've taken that, that works. But, yeah. you know, the premise, it did everything that I remember from the games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they've kept left it open for more. Uh, I just wasn't particularly enamored or enthralled with it. I just, uh, you know, it was just a horror movie. It filled an evening, and then it's yeah. not something I would go back to again. Yeah. I just thought I'd also bring it up because I actually didn't even want to bother bringing it up. But it's kind of tied in with the news story, really, is that it's just become the highest grossing Blumhouse movie yeah, of their entire it filmography. It's totally. literally smashed all the other films out of the water. Paranormal Activity, Insidious, Sinister, Get Out, Halloween, Split. Split was their highest grossing. Yeah. But yeah, now Five all Nights at Freddy's, ki- boom. All, all those kids, they've yeah. just gone, mum and dad, we need to go to the cinema, I need exactly. to watch it. Exactly, because a lot of those kids now have grown DVD. up and at the age, because I think the film's only a 15, yeah. maybe even a 12. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of Smart. blood, but there's not Smart, that much right? gore. So yeah, and, exactly. And the that's marketing, the thing. Boom. That, uh, that audience at the moment, of the, especially like I said, with, with, with my son, he went and watched it. And I I generally, as soon as he said, dad, I want to watch the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, I generally didn't feel bad that he was watching it. You know, if he said to me, like, Dad, I'm really wanting to watch the... Terrifier. Texas, the, oh, yeah, I want to watch Terrifier 1 and 2 tonight. And then maybe the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series after that. I might go be like, you know... Slow down. Slow, slow down, down there. Take a breath, you know. But, oh, I want to watch Five Nights at Freddy's because I'm a fan of the games. Yeah, you know, go right ahead, you know. The fact that he wants to buy it on DVD as well. It's like the rewatchability is there for him because he's going to do what I do as well. Watch a film, then watch it again and look at the things in the background because I was... Or the Dude, hidden when details. You're, when you're a yeah. kid and you're mm. into a computer game and yeah. they do a movie of it, it doesn't matter how shit it is. Do you know how many times I watched Street Fighter when I was a kid? Fuck right. Street, mate, Street Fighter's better than Doom, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But still, you know, but it's, it's still a shit movie. <laughs> but, like, you know... For you, I, all I, we I, had I then the was Mortal Kombat For you, and it was Street a Fighter. shit movie. For Raul <laughs> Julia, <laughs> it, was it was a Tuesday. Okay, so I've got two other shows that I want to talk about. It's gone from three to five. I wasn't going to point that out. <laughs> it's fine, okay? I was drinking before. And I'm an analyst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, it was really hard for me not to point that out. <laughs> so uh, thank you. This is a callback to uh, Andy that mentioned uh, in the previous podcast, the Netflix show Painkiller. Uh, it's a six-part... Now you part... skipped Squid Game, the challenge, mate. Yeah, I know, but I'm just oh, doing okay. this just oh, to okay. confuse you <laughs> both. <laughs> You're questioning oh, my maths. Excuse me. Now we'll do things out of order. Now that people listen to this, I have yeah, no idea what we're doing. 
<laughs> so Squid Game's the chat. No, wait. <laughs> Painkiller, six-part uh, series on Netflix. It uh, follows the causes and consequences of America's opioid epidemic and how it unfolded in the drama following its perpetrators, its victims, and the investigation, which is split over, like, uh, time jumps. Okay. Uh, it follows uh, Uzo Asuba, Matthew Broderick, and Taylor Kitsch as the main cast. Nice. And I have to say, like, Andy mentioned in the previous podcast, it was a wonderful companion piece to the fall of the House of Usher, and it worked really, really well, because we are following this pharmaceutical company that is being sued, and eventually... You know, they, they don't have Mark Hamill there to just keep them out of the hmm. courts. And, ha- and They needed know, a Mark Hamill, didn't they? They, yeah. they certainly did. They so, yeah, and it's Wait. also based on a true Regime story where all of the names ah. have been changed for dramatic purposes. And uh, it was it's a real eye-opener as well. I didn't really know to quite the extent of this story. And so seeing it played out, told as well as it is, so uh, it, it was literally... The way they pull up. Did you guys like the real victims, sort of parents or yeah. loved ones, and then go each. into go yeah. into it. it? It's phenomenal. I, personally, I think it is Matthew Broderick's best sort of work. I think so recently. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, would yeah, you really guys well say um, what was that other one? Was it the Dropout on Disney, where the woman makes the uh, the drug? Well, she she creates a drug that she starts selling off. Um, what's her face from? Is that Amanda Siegfried? I think it's Amanda Siegfried from know. Mean Girls. I've not seen you not seen that? No. Which oh. film? The Dropout? Dropout. Is no. it The Dropout? It's not, a, it's not a film. I think it's a TV series about... Um, the, the, you, basically, you're talking about the opioid, uh, opioid epidemic in America. It kind of feeds into that. But right. If you guys haven't seen that, then you should see it. I should Fuck. shut my face. No, no. <laughs> you know, Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick all the Man, way. You should watch, you should watch Painkiller. It's fucking great. Yeah. Man, I, you know I don't do dramas like that. Wiki it honestly I was like when I was I haven't finalised like my top 10 of the year Me but yeah. I was kind of like Fall of the House of Usher is going to be on top it. 5 for sure and I was like Painkiller is possibly going to be on it I was like can I can, can I they double join? stamp yeah. I was like, can I double stamp that I was honestly like can I get away from that? <laughs> I, I, was, I can so do what I want technically but I was but, like yeah. does that count yeah because <laughs> they are a great companion piece yeah, they are they really are you should totally go back to the 5 because you know I just saw a thing in there it is, isn't no, it? No, well, because I saw the thing in the uh, chat. <coughs> no chat, the, uh, you know, about Squid Games. Squid Games. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good talk. Cool. I don't know if you guys uh, are aware of this, but Squid Games was a pretty big thing on Netflix a couple of years ago. Uh, so much so that uh, they did green light a second season, but then with strikes and pandemics and all other sorts of things happening, we still haven't got it yet. Uh, though, that hasn't stopped Netflix going, well, let's just do it for real. Let's get 457 people real. and, well, we'll fake kill them, but let's let's bring some people in that have all, like, got, Apple TV. all got money issues that all, you know, would do whatever it takes to win $4.5 million and uh, let's put them in a Big Brother style reality TV show where they have to play games and eliminate each other. And uh, it's, I feel almost a little bit of shame <laughs> in how much... I've thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> See, I think they totally dropped the ball with it. In what sense? Well, I, Have you watched it? By no, not really no, killing people. No, I... <laughs> hold hold, oh, hold that idea, there, right? <laughs> no, no. See, when I first saw Squid Game, because I, I didn't watch the series because I was just like, oh, it's Battle Royale all over again. And Battle Royale is amazing. But with the Squid Game TV series, obviously they go into these really crazy fucking games and people end up getting taken out. Battle Royale style, yeah? And the mm. winner wins this prize. And I was always just like, man, that's like Takeshi's Castle on acid. They should right. totally make that into a fucking TV series. Squid Game, the challenge comes along. Netflix Netflix goes, let's make a make, let's make a show. And instead of just going full to Keshi's Castle, but mixing it with Squid Game, where you get how many people? Is it in, in, in this? It's like 457. You get that 457 number. people all running out a wall, and only one of them, only there's only one door, and you just watch all the. Remember Takeshi's no, no. Castle? The, yeah. Remember how cool that shit was where people were hitting themselves in the face? Dude, I'm still intrigued by your idea of watching Takeshi's Castle on acid. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what I'm asking is are the. Are the contestants on acid? Or am <laughs> I watching it? No, no, no. <laughs> what I mean I'm is... cool with either. I just want to know where I stand. And where with, with I just want to know whether I can drive after Squid Game the Challenge, I don't think the games, or Gary can tell me if I'm wrong, I don't think the games are 
they're risque. Enough. No, they're not. They're, they're, there's no physicality really to them. Which is an idea, like very I said, psychological. On the Takeshi's Castle kind of That's side, cool. Netflix could have mm. made so much more money if they got 457 people and put them in some of the craziest fucking style games, Squid Game style games, mm. where they get taken out. The idea the is they're Squid Games. Work. They're kind I'm of like Korean children's now, games. Because, I, cause to be fair, yeah, like, cause, like I said, I, I didn't really enjoy Squid Games. But how is that entertaining? Because I, I it's the human, the human psychological drama. That, that's why it's almost a bit shameless because I'm so, I get invested. I've got my favourites and then I watch them get eliminated and there's nothing, you know, there's nothing. See, you don't, see, you don't, you don't, you don't deal with enough human drama in in your day. What you want to see is people running at a wall, and only one section of it is a door. So you watch 457 people like. Bah, 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 bah. Dude, he is low key telling you that he is like two days away from shooting up one of them schools. It's right. Like, no, 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 what I'm saying is, this, what people found entertaining in the Squid Game <laughs> TV series were people being put in these fucking savage games and being taken They're out not- savagely. I mean, they're not really savage games, but if they fail, yeah, then they are executed. Right, that's what I'm saying. But Takeshi's the games are very simple. Style. Do you, oh, the games the in the series were very simple, weren't yes, they? they are, yeah. Netflix yeah. totally dropped the ball. They should, gone, right. thing they, should they should have gone... They should have mixed Takeshi's Castle right. with Wipeout and fucking put it out there for fucking people to join up and try and win shit ton of money. Instead, they got some fucking stupid ass children games. Where no, you sit the, the there, seri- and you, you sit the there and watch the yeah, games. but you sit there and watch the human psyche under pressure. But you, why not just watch fucking Big Brother for that shit? Because so I don't so want to so watch Big so Brother. So, so, no so you're gonna watch yeah, Squid right. Game Big Brother style? Yeah, because it's edit- <laughs> it's edited into well, it's gonna be ten episodes. <laughs> they haven't finished airing the final episode yet, as there's now at the moment of recording this, there's three left, three players left. Oh, wow. So um, and so it's the fact that what I enjoy watching is the psychological friendship groups that form and then the backstabbing and then the politicking and then the and then how the you know the nope. the, the relationships Whoa. that they build up <laughs> they, backstage then affects them in the game where they're like well we've got a friendship that. so if I eliminate you or there's an opportunity that you have to guess who is trying to eliminate you you wouldn't pick me because we've got a friendship if back three in the of bunk, them so. should be put into a physical krypton factor style game where if they get knocked out, yeah, it's out, not they about the physicality of, of it. Like the, literally in, in the Squid Games, gonna... they have a, a tug of war, and so there was a lot of macho, jockish type male characters in Squid Games. The challenge going, yeah, it's going to be that. So let's get all the fucking tough guys on one challenge. And yeah, and Squid Games, the challenge went, no, we're not having a tug of war. We're going to have a game of human battleships. So, it sounds to me like you're like, you, if you were in the writer's room, you'd be like, can we just make Krypton Factor again, please? <laughs> right. but yeah, yeah, but yeah, I just don't. Can we call it Squid Game? Like no, I'm going to call like it Like I said, I don't, well. I don't, I don't understand. The, I, I, I don't see the difference between this and Big Brother. When well, it has in Big Brother, so Big they Brother don't Brother. have much to do. In this, where it's a, it's the fact that they build the like giant they set pieces and they are forced to do these tasks and challenges over a couple of days. So it's not stretching it out for the whole summer like a Big Brother. It's yeah. concise. It's it's well edited. I've heard that there's a lot of you know, just, a lot of editing that's happened. The big difference is, is you don't have to listen to that wanker every nine minutes going, Dear it, diary <laughs> room. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like, Mate, yeah. if I get my hands around your throat. Oh, man. But that's yeah, why I don't I mean, watch Big Brother. It's, it's in, interesting characters no, in interesting sure. ways that they know psychologically that they're playing a game and how they have to try to have a personality or a persona or try to win people over so that they won't get eliminated. So the human psychological kind of yeah. aspect to it I found fascinating yeah. uh, but at the same time it's edited so that the music's there the tension's there the cliffhanger episode ends are there we're yeah. like how's this game going to work how's it going to play is the character that you've been following the game's already just over. spent a couple of minutes in the diary room you know finding diary out their room. backstories and why they've nominated themselves to be in the That's games it. In the, the game's place. already been over for three months we're just watching the episodes catch up now well, well yeah that's how TV <laughs> tend to work it's, it's, such, a, it's <laughs> such a weird thing that obviously I don't watch a lot of reality TV shows but the one constant that I've always found that always cracks me up the, do you know honestly the most recent reality style show which is similar to this because it was a game show was that Steve Austin Broken Skull Ranch yeah, yeah, where yeah. it was an assault course and stuff so, I was yeah. into, so I'm into like physicality and working out and obviously fucking love stuff yeah. Steve Austin so I was watching that and it used to crack me up that he'd have like this long intro for some dude and he'd be like yeah I'm like you know I'm an ex-US Marine and I did this and I could do the Murph in fucking four minutes flat and I could do this, that and the other. I'm going to do this to win this for my family and do that. And he'd like, there'd be a 30 so minute intro yeah. and then he'd like finish the race and be like, you're out. <laughs> I'm like, glad we got to know you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The Rock did one, didn't he? 
Dwayne Johnson hosted one as well. Oh, Broken Rails. No, like a... But, well, basically the same kind of thing, like an assault. It looked like yeah. Gladiators, it was in a studio. Do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, no, I remember the Vox one as well. Yeah. It was like a... It was thing. really funny. Because I remember that they put yeah, a guy... Yeah, physical no, fucking... They, they had one where you had to climb a ladder. To, both players have to climb a ladder. Yeah. And then you have to kind of like knock each other off the platform at the top, right? So so nothing yeah, but be... One of the guys had one arm. Nothing. And be... he's like, I can do anything that anyone else here can do. And they're like, you're going into the game with a ladder. And he was like, fuck. <laughs> Oh, geez. The other guy just climbed the ladder and kind of just kicked him off when he yeah. got to the top. <laughs> Nothing beats yeah. Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Ninja Warrior is the best. Kickstart on the fucking scrambler bikes. <laughs> the kids on the scrambler bikes when we were kids. That was the tits. That was the pinnacle of TV. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm ashamedly enthusiastically giving uh, Squid Games the challenge my thumbs up. I've. Uh, a compulsive viewing for me and yeah i didn't think so but yeah when i was up until three in the morning i'm like yeah next episode i'll just do it yeah. <laughs> i'm like yeah i've got a problem um, if it goes to season two we're chat raises about. a good question that it's oh. um you still haven't said merry christmas yet he also says in the big brother voice <laughs> oh right, oh, right yeah i mean wish everyone a merry at christmas. least uh, yeah. it's difficult for you to say i know i know it's, 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 it's difficult it's up to it. it's so uh let's get on to some uh onto some news shall we <laughs> yeah it's onto some news. Let's, let's bring the tone down just a little bit as it yeah. is uh that time where i'd like to honor orange. those in the industry oh, yeah, sorry we should point out gary gave us all cherry chocolate i'm trying to bring the tone down here so he's bringing the tone down while he reads out people that have died we're gonna sit here and fucking eat cherry chocolate orange for Oh dear. <laughs> um, Joss Ackland <laughs> has passed away at the age. I can't try not to laugh while I read this out, <laughs> you fuckers. <laughs> Diplomatic oh, immunity. Oh. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, Joss Ackland has passed away at a good old age of 95. A veteran character actor who worked on stage, film, TV, and he'll be remembered for his roles in Lethal Weapon 2, The Hunt for Red October, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Mm -hmm. uh, while on TV, he had memorable roles in Midsummer Murders, Kingdom, and The Young Indiana Jones. Uh, Joss yeah, Ackles' awesome. manager, Paul Pearson, said mm, um, he died of old age this morning with his family around. He was lucid, erudite, and mischievous to the end. I loved him deeply, and for me, he is the reason we have the word magnificent mm -hmm. in the dictionary. So, yeah, he will be missed. I'll always remember him, the fact that at the end of uh, Bogus Journey, he marries Missy. Missy, I'll right. like that. <laughs> In the newspaper, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do also just want to say our new segments might be mostly just rapid fire news as it was only been two, weeks, only two since, weeks since the since last the podcast, podcast. So. Um, and most of most of the news really it's consists of the strikes over and we're back to work and we've cast this person now. So, what uh, did the strike do? It got more money for actors and writers. Right. Yeah. Hey, you got to remember, sorry, this comes down to a lot. This actually affects people all the way down the chain. That is the whole point of it. Yeah. You know, the people that aren't multi-millionaires it's about getting like fair, fair no no I totally get that and I'm not against striking or anything like that obviously you know and, we're, we're, and, and, and whatever yeah. work AI industry and CGI whatever clones. work industry you get Son of a the, bitch. The, these the, are amazing the, the thing that I just the thing that no I just don't get once a year. Right. is that you know so they striked they wanted better pay Mm -hmm. So everyone agreed to better it was pay. The fact that they they with, went back to work. It's also the fact and that streaming is a new thing, and streaming was not in their original contract. Oh yeah, so. yeah, no, no, and I get that. It's a, it's a complete change away for the mm. the future. You know, like we said, between the 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 factor of utilizing AI for writing scripts and fucking using um, was it the motion technology to take dead actors and put them onto the TV so you don't have to yeah. pay their families. So then you obviously you've got to change all these contracts. But what I'm saying is, is so that. Now that it's all fixed, everybody's happy and they're right back, and we're right back to business as usual. Disney's going to release a couple of films in the summer. We're going to watch a couple of good movies. There's going to be a couple of horror movies out in Halloween, and then it'll be Christmas all over again. Yeah, so business yeah, as usual. Again. Business as usual. That's yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just checking. But now the actors and writers are at least happy. I'm just making sure. Part. You know, I don't really get involved with this shit. And one minute people are striking, people aren't. John Cena's at work. No, he's not. And, you know, it's just a thing. Well, I mean, now we can go back to TV stuff again. You'll probably make a wrestling exit again. Well, WrestleMania is in <laughs> April. You know, he <laughs> right. might be busy April. <laughs> uh, next bit of uh, film news is that Dave Filoni, it's a guy I've brought up a fair few times yeah especially uh, around the star wars stuff he has now actually been promoted to chief creative officer at lucasfilm seems to be very positive for people 
people were, seem to be very happy about this. Yeah. Uh, which is weird because it involves Star Wars. Yes. And the internet community was happy. Yeah. Now. So I didn't really know what to do with this. Yeah. When, <laughs> when, when the really Star Wars prequels came out, everyone was bashing on George Lucas. And then Dave Filoni came along with the Star Wars. Um, Trilogy. Uh, no, uh, the, the animated shows. <laughs> oh, uh, um, I think Clone Wars. The Clone the Wars, and then yeah. uh, and then Rebels, and you know, and it was also been behind Mandalorian and um, uh, the Book of Boba Fett and uh, Ashoka and all the other Star Wars stuff. But all the good shit. Every time that Dave Filoni apparently has been brought into those pro- those projects, yeah, he said that the development phase and all of the initial planning phase has already been done. So he was then coming in to oversee it as it was going, okay. not from the beginning. He said, right. now that he's in this position, you'll be able to oversee every Star Wars project from the planning stages right the way through. So you'll have more control over it so that you know he can't go <laughs> against other people's decisions that have influenced such projects. So, so I'm really confused. Whether this is going to turn out to be a good thing or not, yeah. I don't yet yeah. know. I'm really confused with this. Yeah, because the, the interesting thing is like you've always got... This is the whole Kevin Feige thing all the time. It's like what they've done with um, um, Thingy at DC. Yeah. Um, help me out. Fucking hell. Quick. James Gunn. Thank you, James Gunn. James Gunn. For a second. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, th- I think they've realized, like, look, we need someone with a clear consistent. idea Somebody to just can... consi- like, we're going to deliver everything and it's going to be So like, he and, yeah, but Dave Filoni answers to Kathleen Kennedy? Everyone. No, I think, I think now he is above Kathleen Kennedy in terms of uh, so the creative So Dave Filoni wasn't him. involved with Ahsoka? No, he was. But not. But people didn't in that like position. Ahsoka. Basically, he was, I didn't. Some people it, it did. Was ba- yeah, no, it's been positively received. But in, in general, but he's basically he's fucking right. Salt Bay, mate. He's just come in all all, night, all like this on all of the series. Yeah, just sprinkle a little bit. Yeah, a little right. bit of okay. Dave Filoni so, greatness. Yeah, but yeah. Now, now he has the reign. So if it does fail, now it is solely on him, not on John Favreau. Maybe you can still blame Kathleen Kennedy. It seems like the popular thing to do. Still. They will do. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Everybody get ready to blame Dave Filoni or love him. Yeah. Even if he does really well, they'll still hate on him because that's the thing Some to do with Star Wars, isn't it? Some people Probably. Would. Yeah. I don't know. But I'm... it did seem really... But it was interesting. It did seem quite positive. People seemed to I need to finish Mandalorian 3. I need to finish... Was he involved in Andor? Yes. Yeah, I, I, see, I, I didn't get behind yeah. Andor. Andor's um, fucking great. Yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to, Andor but Andor is honestly like, the best hey, thing they've done. I know that guy survives through all the Rogue One. Uh, but I know for Dave Filoni, uh, he's primarily involved with Mandalorian and Ashoka. So uh, those were his primary uh, projects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other than, obviously, Clone Wars and Rebels. Uh, but yeah, I've, I I think he's... Um, it's the fact that he is a diehard Star Wars fan that knows Star Wars inside and out almost as well as George Lucas did. Yeah. Which is why you know George Lucas brought him on in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's good to see that he's still there and he's still passionate about it. So hopefully uh, the storytelling and the writing can... Oh Come my god! Go so, I honestly just saw the image of him. They're like, "Here, Dave, this is your new office. This is where we'll send all your paperwork and all your lights." And he's like, "Okay." And it's a giant office with a massive, huge window. And he walks over and he pulls the fucking cloak up <laughs> and he <laughs> sits down in it. We have come home. I didn't now we can have our revenge. I fucking insist on it personally. Jar Jar Binks the series. Alrighty, then next news stories. Uh, got some Scream news. Yeah, there's been loads. There's yeah, been a fucking fair amount. hell, this is kicked off. Uh, now, it? this really kind of started off when uh, Melissa Barrera has been uh, had been dropped from the next installment by Spyglass due to social media posts regarding the Israel Hamas conflict. Yeah. Uh, Spyglass stance is unequivocally clear that they have zero tolerance for anti Semitism or the incitement of hate in any form, including false references to genocide, ethnic cleansing, holocaust distortion, or anything that flagrantly crosses the line into hate speech, uh, a spyglass spokesperson told Variety. Uh, Now, Scream 7 director has recently posted saying, this was not my decision to make. Everything sucks. Please stop yelling. And a broken heart (laughs) emoji. Uh, But then it also came out that Jenna Ortega had confirmed that she will also now not be back for the next Scream entry. Reportedly due to scheduling conflicts as the result of the recent actor strike mm-hmm. and then going back into production for Jenna, it's Beetlejuice 2 and Wednesday Season 2. Uh, but it seems like Spyglass could have waited for Jenna, but apparently they're like, well, well, we'll move on without you as well. Like, well, you've just lost like half nearly of your surviving oh, cast say, members because yeah, you good. killed off a lot of the legacy ones this is gonna and be returning tough ones. This is I was going to say, Jenny, because... The other girl, the Palestinian Hamas 
um, Twitter or a girl. Yeah. Her character and Jenny Ortega, were they the sisters? No. So were they even main characters? That they you... were. I mean, Jenny Ortega wasn't so much a main character, but she survived and then she a much bigger part in the But next the other one. girl was a main character? Yes. Don't need them back. I mean, well, <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, yeah, but they clearly had a plan. They, no, no, no they yeah, they had clearly plan. had a plan. But, but look at the whole thing that they had with Neve Campbell, where they weren't going to... They weren't going to pay her enough. They weren't going to yeah, pay her, say, and they weren't going to bring her back. It, and every yeah, now and again, they're kidding off characters. They fucking hell, they made a whole TV series about the fucking Scream series without any of the fucking legacy characters. They could easily just write it as a bunch of new teens in a new school and then when it makes a shit ton of money because it's so original they'll mm. go oh yeah we'll get all the original characters back because Jenny Ortega needs a job after fucking Beetlejuice 2 bombed at the fucking box office um, I think Beetlejuice 2 is going to do mad I think it's going to do pretty well I think it's <laughs> doing mad business dude yeah. yeah but you guys think Terrifier 3 is going to do mad business it's as well it's so going to do mad business Terrifier 3 we will see, we will see. okay we dude, will see I'm not going to argue about the quality of the movie. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not. But you, it's but if do you don't think that Terrifier <laughs> Three is going to make all the money, yeah, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah, Man, yeah, yeah. But the Star hype for it's already building. I was yeah, say. I know, I, and I get it, but it still doesn't make it better. That's what you said. We're not saying that. We're not, yeah. mate. I, know, this, I told yeah, you I've watched Terrifier the same one, one, same two, with one time each and that Be- will be it my Be- life yeah, 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 yeah but the same thing with Beetlejuice 2 it could make all the money as well and the movie could still suck yeah but we're still saying it's going to make that money I mean because yeah. he, he's going to end up being fucking you know just like in um, Ghostbusters Afterlife cloning his granddaughter <coughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the new one I can't wait for the fucking Frozen Empire whatever it's called hell yes mm. yeah that was the that trailer oh, was so great. The, the only bad thing about that trailer is the fact that it came up with like, what was it, April Yeah, April next like, year. Like, oh, you tell so me that's not coming out for Christmas? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, the next news story is uh, that The Boys mm. is getting yet another spin-off show. Fucking hell. This time, The Boys Mexico. Yeah. Now, while we've been waiting for a season four of The Boys, right. uh, we recently had the conclusion of the spin-off, Gen V, mm-hmm. uh, which tied in fairly well with the main uh, show uh, and teased what's to come. Uh, but apparently this new show that's going to be set in Mexico, of course, we don't know how it will contribute to the story or what it's even going to be about. Uh, all we do know is that The Boys Mexico will continue the creative collaboration between Eric Kripke, Seth Rogen, and Evan Goldberg, who have been you know working on The Boys since the start. So if they if the three of them are still involved and they've got other stories to tell, and it's going to be in the same vein in style, it's in a different location. Bring it. I'll give it a go. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Mm. Although I have to say, I, I think I mentioned in the last podcast, Gen V is uh, it is definitely living in the shadow of the boys, which is still the superior show. To. And they've already said that, yeah, you know, there's only so much of the boys until yeah. it has to reach its conclusion. Yeah, yeah. They can't just keep milking it. So uh, well, they don't want to do a Walking Dead, and and that's basically what. <laughs> Dude, they just got they got to take that fucker that's out. What, that's <laughs> what Believe it or not, there was a rumor. I didn't add it into the news, but there was a rumor today mm. uh, that um, uh, a- uh, AMC's The Walking Dead extended universes will be coming to a universal conclusion mm. within the next three to four years. Yeah, so yeah. They all would, the spin-off shows, to... all of it will all actually there will be an end, and there will be no more spin-offs coming. Apparently, HBO are already in talks with AMC to purchase the rights to. The Walking Dead, and do a comic book faithful adaptation over HBO, where the budget for each episode would be, would be equivalent to an entire season of The Walking Dead. That's stupid. Uh, I don't know. I, no, no, no. I, I think HBO have I mean, uh, a tendency to have quality. They don't no. have the same restrictions that AMC I mean, have in terms of gore, need it? Need uh, language. No, that's, what I'm sa- that's what I'm saying. Is The Walking Dead, <coughs> and, and this is the thing I have with, with TV shows like The Boys and stuff like that, where Basically, they've seen the success of taking a comic book adaptation, mm-hmm. yeah, and turn it into a series. Now, I was there for The Walking Dead season two. Mm-hmm. I I was there when people had given up and they weren't coming back. Exactly. And so I people was had given like, up by season two. Yeah. So and, all yeah, the more but reason I was like, to try again. No, 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 no. All the more reason that The Walking Dead original TV series was such such a success mm. is that they didn't have to rely on big budgets. Or, you know, big TV companies behind them throwing large amounts of money at them. 
I survived the season two of Walking Dead because of the great performances from the actors just trying to get through each episode. You really know how good a TV series is when it's hit its low. And the same with The Boys Mexico. It's basically Fear the Walking Dead for The Boys. Now, Fear the Walking Dead almost didn't survive season one or two. But with people's interest... That was its most popular seasons. Yeah, yeah but with, with people's interest in The Walking Dead waning, they needed something else. So they were going to Fear the Walking Dead. And then they not only have they completed or, or, or done more with Fear the Walking Dead than they ever planned to, they've also gone and given Daryl his own TV show, fucking Maggie her own TV show with Rick's Negan. Getting his own. Rick's getting his return TV show. Fuck so the know, Walking man. Dead, The Walking Dead has gone far and above the call of fucking duty in the fact of a comic comic series adaptation into a TV series. They had to tweak a few things. Some other shows have tried to do th- the, the same, like Game of Thrones. It hasn't worked. Walking Dead survived on the laurels of the characters and cast that they had, delivering the characters yeah, that they I had. I have to say, it would be I, I think it, really it makes sense at least to that recast. they would, I, Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I, that's, I, that's I guess what I'm it saying. makes it's sense at least Morgan. that they're like, look, we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> we're gonna sorry we're gonna give you a comic book version of it yeah it, it, it kind of makes book sense faithful but it's just kind of like but so we're not gonna spend the whole season on a farm but, yeah but you well, know, the, it's basically yeah, it's like okay so Rick's gonna lose that arm he's gonna lose that arm yeah, yeah. Like, but yeah. I've okay. read the comic I've read the comic books and honestly it, it, it it's similar the, but the show did deviate no the comic books all over the comic books barely survived as well because they had the governor and the governor was fucking well arsh yeah and so the then when AMC couldn't show that, and so when Negan, HBO were like, we'll show it. But yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, in, the, yeah, but yeah. in the comic books, or I'm saying with the comic books, when we saw the governor, we were like, man, that's fucking harsh. When Negan came along, he had to be even worse yeah. to keep selling the comic books. Yeah. That's why the whispers just like a different. That, that's why the whispers. That's why the whispers after that they had to be even harsher. Yeah. I I realized this when I was watching the Walking Dead TV show that season four and season five. I'm like, man, they just keep getting. They keep getting out of one situation into another. It takes half the season for them to realize what they're in. Then they kill the fuck out of everybody. (laughs) And then they get out of the situation. And then, whoa, it's the next season. And guess what? They're right back (laughs) into a fucking batch. It was once they got to Negan and they dealt with the whole Negan stuff. And that lasted for such a long time. I was like, you know what? It lasted too long. When that ended, the long war, literally. Yeah. When that ended, I was like, you know what? I'm good. I know I can go back and mm-hmm. see the continuation of Alexandria and the yeah. the Whisperers and that kind of storyline. But I'm good with the boys. I don't mean to shit on it. I I I haven't watched the TV series, but I'm not a boys fan. But I don't see the boys Mexico lasting too long. It's a spin-off, so yeah, it can whatever if story it, it, it only, has need, to it only tell. needs if, to be a season. If it does, yeah. it's gonna survive. Along, like I said, along with the Fear of the Walking Dead, where characters are, are maybe maybe they give you new characters that aren't in the comic book that people go, hey, I want to keep watching that and see how they develop those. Yeah. And then they'll just develop from there. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll, considering I'm still enamored with the boys, that universe, those characters, I'm like, I'll take some side stuff while I wait for the main show to come yeah, back 100%. each year. Yeah. Uh, but with the Walking Dead, who doesn't I'm a huge DLC, fan. mate? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a little I'll side story. DLC, we're yeah, waiting for a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. With The Walking Dead, though, I mean, I'd I love that universe. I'm I'm already now just get, trying to get ready for the fact that that universe will end soon, and yeah. that there will be no yeah. more spin-offs. So, you know, a few years after the last Walking Dead has you know shuffled off this TV network, I'll be uh, I'll be itching in a few years' Man. time for another Walking Dead project. No, you'll want to so, go back I, and watch the original. You'll want to... I, I mean, I might do. I've watched the first several seasons a couple of times. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And I, that's why I'm enamoured with the casting. Like, it's perfect casting for you know, everyone. I was looking for my DVD collection a couple of days ago. I was looking for a film and I totally forgot I've got the first three seasons of The Walking Dead on DVD. Nice. Yeah, I've got... Like, you know, I think well, I've got Disney's got, five, got it all. It's, like, yeah. it's available yeah. everywhere and I'm looking at season one I'm like... Man, it's still such an amazing first season. It is, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's good. why I'm OPHBO, HBO. Like, here, Frank, <laughs> <laughs> you want to want to make Walking Dead again? Yeah, try yeah. again. Go, Frank. Oh dear. All righty. Next, uh, next news segment. Again, a very short news segment. But uh, Bloober Team mm. have released a small statement regarding the Silent Hill Two remake, which we're all kind of wondering why isn't not out yet. 
And they are requesting our patience regarding the release date, yeah. saying the team is diligently working to ensure that Silent Hill 2 Remake attains the highest quality. The update went on to say that the production is progressing smoothly and in line with the developer's schedule. Now, there has been some speculation as well that perhaps Konami have uh, tightened the reins on Bloober Team to say, wait... The, because of the writers and actor strikes, the Silent Hill 2 movie has been shut down for like six months. So uh, uh, you now need to delay the game until they finished filming and all the special effects uh, are done. So the film and the game can come out the same kind of week or period of time. Yeah. That's the speculation right now because I from the trailers and the fact that Konami came out, you know, I don't know how long ago it was now to go, all these new Silent Hill stuff's coming out. Mm. And then there'd just be nothing. Just silence after the like awful, awful Silent Hill Ascension TV <laughs> web game abomination of awfulness that they uh, dropped on everybody. It was like they huh. stood on top of a hill and shouted to everybody and then it went silent. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fucking stretch. <laughs> <laughs> you str- I let you struggle through that one, but I think I feel like you should have pulled the fucking ripcord halfway through that. <laughs> so I guess we'll, uh, we'll we'll keep our ear to the to the to the hills and see if we actually hear anything from Silent Hill anytime I thought soon. the hills had eyes. Netflix has confirmed, <laughs> yeah, <yeah>. and they <laughs> have greenlit a chapter seven or a season seven of Black Mirror. There's no casting confirmed yet, but Charlie Brooker will be returning as executive producer, a long time his returning collaborator. So if you like uh, dystopian sci-fi thriller horror and you've not watched any Black Mirror yet, the first few seasons are fantastic. Mm. The following seasons have a couple of good episodes dotted here and there. If you like there. a good three it's good like, out yeah. of seven, eh. It's like yeah. present day Twilight Zone. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've, I've... Do you know what was like present day ti- Twilight Zone? Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. Yeah. <laughs> I've always liked Charlie Broker. I've liked him in his interviews. I've liked yeah. him when he was writing segments for the newspaper. Uh, I love his TV bits, and so anything that he is I, I like his style, his sense of humor, still and got his my, dark humor. I've still got my Dead Set DVD. Fucking Dead Set. Jesus wow, yeah, man. the Big Brother one. Fun. Big Brother Zombies. Big Brother Zombies. <laughs> All right, we got a little bit of casting news here. Uh, the Hannibal film adaptation has cast Denzel Washington in the lead role as the Carthaginian warrior. Hannibal, and this is going to be coming from director Antoine Fuqua, Not who uh, Hannibal, Hannibal. Yeah, no. Were you thinking science? Ah, yeah, I was thinking yeah. science. Like, 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 wow. Wow. Oh, man, you go eat shit. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a Netflix production. Uh, John Logan, who wrote the script for Gladiator, is writing the script for Hannibal. Uh, now Denzel and Antoine have also worked together many times, including Training Day, The Magnificent Seven, and all three Equalizer films. So nice. this is their Training seventh Day. collaboration. Mate, have Training you, Day have you not, holds up. Have you not yeah. seen The Magnificent Seven? I have, yeah, yeah. I fucking, do you know what? No, I haven't seen the, the one, remake. The new one now, with now, fucking it is a remake. With, yeah. with Star Lord yeah. and Denzel. I'm telling you, right? It, it's obviously, it does not hold a candle to the original. The original is a classic Western, but the original doesn't hold a candle to Seven Samurai. When uh, Denzel it's, it's Washington okay. is walking around talking about how his mother and his sister were raped in front of him and he's been hunting that, these guys down all the way. He, like, he's walking down this alleyway and these, these bunch of guys are looking at him and they're all got their hands on their guns. And I've just come off the back of Equalizer and mm. trained down. I'm like, these motherfuckers are dead. Yeah, they didn't even realize <laughs> it. Like, and then know. he goes, bah, 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 and you're like, Man, Star Lord's got a lot to live up to. Yeah. <laughs> Ethan Hawke's in it. Ethan Hawke's yeah, fucking Ethan great in there. Yeah, he's yeah. great in yeah. it. Yeah. Alrighty, and uh, Pedro Pascal back in the news. He's now in talks to play Reed Richards oh, in the was... MCU's Fantastic Why Four. Why didn't they keep the guy from fucking from the multiverse? Yeah, because it was a multiverse. I, I don't know. know. And oh, it wasn't. Yeah. It, right now, these but, are just. It's it's not confirmed. Reed yet. Richards it's is just. In he's in talks to play. Pedro Pascal is Spanish, right? Um, I don't know where he's from. Chat. Anyone? Not entirely uh, sure. I'm assuming he's not like from North London or anything. But <laughs> I don't think so. I just well, think he was Reed Richards. I, I just <laughs> think they're, they're, they're casting him because he's that famous face at the moment. Yeah, he is, and uh, I think Marvel needs some famous faces right now. But uh, it's not going to work unless, like, his he's got to work really well with the Sue Richards. If not, then your Reed Richards is wasted. Same with him with the thing. And Johnny can be a lone wolf because the relationship between him and Johnny has got to be, you know, at Gillian, longer heads. Thank you. It's from um, you know, I have a I have a horrible feeling it's going to be like the Fantastic Four movie, 
Um, we're fucking. Well, the new Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> well, you know, well, pro- probably will share some themes. We're fucking, <laughs> we're fucking. What's his face from Creed? Reitman's movie, wasn't it? Was it Jason Reitman? No, it wasn't Jason Reitman. No. I totally did that. Um, was it David Ayer? Is it the one that the director got fired at the end of? Yeah. And then they And Dr. Doom turns out to be yeah, an yeah. alien from another planet. I, have the guy from I haven't even watched it. it. Yeah. I legit yeah. haven't even watched it. It's bad. It's bad. I didn't it's, hate it's, it. It made Wonder Woman. It, it felt more like good. a horror movie than a superhero movie for the first half. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I love the idea of going, say, saying, we're going to make Fantastic Four and it's going to be a sci fi movie. It's going to be a space exploration movie for a good yeah. chunk. I was like, I'm fine with that. It just doesn't yeah. be good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully. And I'm like, don't fuck up Doom. He's one of the, like, most. Pill, like, <laughs> they, they like fucked he's him up one bad. of the most important. Michael B. Jordan, that's it. He was in, he was in Fantastic Four. That's when you should say that. Yeah, because Michael yeah. B. Jordan's back in the news as well, as they have just announced that Creed Four will be going into production, and that Michael B. Jordan will be returning as actor and as director for the next one. Um, Irvin Winkler said, uh, "We're planning to do Creed Four right now. We've got a really good story and a really good plot." Uh, we got a little bit delayed because of the strikes, but about a <coughs> year from now, we will be going into pre-production. So, yeah, again, uh, I, I'm obviously, I think it's pretty much confirmed already without even being said that Sylvester Stallone's involvement in any future Creed uh, <coughs> scripts and stories is right. just a no-go. Yeah. Uh, because Why of did... his cause of his falling out with uh, Irvin Winkler, yeah. who owns the Rocky franchise. Uh, what over Stallone. Stallone. Uh, wasn't so, it the Drago series he got pissed at that's because right, yeah. they didn't involve him in... Producing some Drago series, oh. or even any, even he was like, not even a anything. fucking call, and all this. Oh, yeah, you know, it's ego, man. It's all uh, ego. Pretty much, it's all yeah. money. Yeah, got some more casting news for you as well. Nicholas Holt has now been officially cast as Lex Luthor for the new Luthor. DC movies, starting with Superman Legacy, as James Gunn reveals additional casting. Nicholas Holt will be joining David Corinsweet, who was in Pearl, Look Both Ways, and We Own This City. He will be playing Superman. And Rachel Brosnahan, uh, who was in The Marvelous Miss Maisel, I'm Your Woman, The Courier, will be playing Lois Lane. Uh, Superman Legacy has an official release date as well of 2025, July 11th. So we've still got a little ways to go. Mm-hmm. I imagine most of that's going to be special effects and whatnot. Most of that's yeah. going to be doing fucking yeah. push-ups. Right. Yeah. <laughs> to get in shape. Yeah, Alrighty, now, we've both been, uh, all three of us here are fans of uh, Cobra Kai. It's appeared in all of our, I think, top tens over the last couple of Mate, years. When this advert dropped, yeah. I lost my shit. The, I was so happy to see this. <laughs> the Cranny Kid movie being prepped for a December 2024 release has now cast Jackie Chan alongside Ralph Macchio. Now, it appears that the two Karate Kid film franchises will connect with a new story that has been pretty much kept under wraps. Multiverse. However, the Multiverse. Hollywood Reporter has found out it will bring the story to the East Coast and focus on a team from China who finds uh, a wise mentor. Man, uh, the new movie is being made by Sony Pictures with a writer and director not involved with Netflix's Cobra Kai. So this could get confusing as we enter maybe an alternate timeline or whether it will tie into Cobra Kai, if at all. Like, we literally don't know. Like if Jackie Chan turns into the evil fucking... Um, instructor from like from China mm. yeah <laughs> and Ralph Macchio is the is... new guy trying to teach the uh, you know um, the new student listen uh, as long as Jaden Smith isn't in it oh, I'm it? Miyagi-Do he's, right. he's teaching Miyagi-Do to the new guy <laughs> and Jackie Chan's like proper fucking evil like, dragon master like, on him like, yeah he yeah. properly gets the kids to punch glass and shit you know he's like no yeah. pain pow <laughs> no pain pow <laughs> That'd be good. Timothy Olyphant. Oh, yes. Yeah, Fargo, The Mandalorian, oh, Deadwood, fantastic. Santa Clarita Diet, Justified, Hitman has just been cast in the new Aliens TV series by Noah Hawley. Go. Uh, so there. this for me, I, I, I love this dude. He is a fantastic yes. actor. Like literally brings a style to every role that he plays. He has got such a charisma. Uh, he's fascinating to watch. So hearing that he is going to be involved in an alien project, my, that's I'm happy with his casting. Uh, now apparently he's going to be playing the role of Kirsch, a synthetic who acts as a mentor and trainer for Sidney Chandler's Wendy character, who is a hybrid, a meta-human right. who has the brain and consciousness of a child, but the body of an adult. Now, the Alien series continued production in Thailand a small ways into the strikes. 
uh, while the strikes were going on using non-union and non-SAG AFTRA staff until they had to shut down until the rest of the cast was available. Now, this Aliens TV show will be due out next August, August 2024. So, uh, I mean, Look, I'm, take your fucking time. No yeah, one needs to rush this out. Like, I'm happy True. Timmy Fiolifan's going to be in it, but the moment he gets killed, I'm turning it off. <laughs> well, it's good. I mean, the androids are particularly difficult to kill. Yeah, well, that's, so. what, that's what I'm saying. I was very surprised to find out that he's an alien, but then looking at this hybrid thing, that he's uh, that I'm like, well, hold on a minute. What, how's this connected to aliens? It's set How's between it? the two movies. Dude, they, they've been threatening this whole right. hybrid yeah. thing for years. So literally, he's eventually going to happen. Yeah, yeah, but it's like anything. If it's good, it'll be good. Yeah. However. <laughs> However. Yeah. 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 Alrighty, uh, next news story uh, sees uh, director Francis Lawrence has now confirmed that he is working on a Stephen King adaptation of The Long Walk. Finally. Uh, King uh, had published this story in 1979. Uh, actually, I think it was also one of the first books that he wrote. I think when he was still yeah. in college, actually. Right. Yeah. Uh, but this one was published under the pseudonym uh, Richard Backman and was collected into an omnibus in 1985, including all of the, the Backman books. Now, back in 1988, George A. Romero was involved in an adaptation that never came to be. Back in 2007, Frank Darabont mm. had secured the rights to adapt the story, uh, which saw the rights lapse back to New Line Cinema in 2018, uh, with James Vanderbilt directing. That also fell through. Uh, so now, will Francis Lawrence get to make it happen? We're hoping so. It's a great, unique story. Uh, but Francis Lawrence also has Constantine 2, I Am Legend 2, and a Bioshock video game to movie adaptation, and a biopic of Sublime, the rock band, all in production right now. So yeah. he's a pretty busy dude. Yeah. So whether he does get to do this long walk, I they don't should, know. They should have given long walk to that Michael, what's his face guy? Who did um, House Flanagan? Yeah. Well, he's right. He's busy right now doing another Stephen King yeah. adaptation yeah. on top of another I, Stephen King adaptation. I always imagined the Long no, Walk. Been in plates. The Long Walk right. could. I, I when I wikied the Long Walk, I was just like, man, you know what? You could easily make this a two-hour movie, and it's literally you're just seventy style camera style where you're just following the runners or the, or the walkers. walkers. Yeah. Yeah. And you They've just, got to do four miles an hour, I think. Yeah, is, yeah, and you just see it from the view of the walkers. You know how in like Vanishing Point, you're just there in the car with the guy, yeah, and so you just time. feel like that you're just on that road all at the same time. Yeah, that's how I imagine how the long walk should be, where you're like on the shoulder of the walkers, and so when things happen and they fall off the side of the road and they just get pulled off and they just get shot, yeah. you're you, you're already on the shoulder of another walker as he's continuing walking because yeah. he doesn't want to die. You know, he wants to get I think the there's prize. so many unique and individual ways you could approach this film and you stylistic go, ways of storytelling. I you, think it's... Well, I, I think... Which it, is why so many different like great actors... Uh, sorry, great directors have been attracted to this project. I think Because they can visualise it. I think it really firmly has to be set in kind of a, a, a late 70s kind of apocalyptic style... Logan's Run kind of future. Yeah, right. You can't if you do it kind of Hunger Games style, where it's all too CGI glossy and glossy and, and stuff. Yeah. You'll lose the beauty of the book mm. and and the individual individualism of the characters as they, you know, because when you get to the end, like I said, I've wicked it. The ending. If you don't do that ending, you lose the impact of the story. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, and my last news story of this segment is that Jordan Peele and his production team are now officially working on mm. a remake of Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. Nice. There's no casting That's news, awesome. no other information yeah. thus far, but that, I mean, Jordan Peele has been making some fantastic, uh, indiv you know, uh, unique horror movies, and so now Sammy's doing a remake, but I guess... Like, it's the the original Wes Craven, The People Under the Stairs, for me, is a cult movie. It's classic. I love yeah, it, love cool. it, love it. Gonna get it you! Gonna it, get it, you! It didn't really reach the heights, I think, for a Wes Craven film that it could have done. Yeah. So maybe this adaptation, this remake, retelling, uh, could go darker. Dude, he's yeah. got such a good visual style. Jordan Peele's exactly. good. Yeah. Amazing. So, even, yeah. Even though I didn't, like, enjoy nope from a story point of view i did say it was like it looks Visually fucking great. phenomenal yeah. yeah he yeah oh man jordan peele has to work with bing rames right bing rames bing rames 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 rames. Rames. <laughs> has to work with him that was <laughs> fucking amazing <laughs> yeah all righty so uh the uh let's we've got one trailer only oh, one trailer what a fucking and i think trailer. it is yes. probably the best trailer of the year next to ghostbusters it's furiosa, furiosa. a mad max oh. saga 
I checked because I was watching the trailer. I was within the first hour of watching the trailer, and all as the trailer was playing, all I could see was the view count crazy. just just going yeah. crazy. And so I checked uh, this morning, and that trailer has amassed eight million views in under a day on YouTube alone. George so Miller's like, fucking laughing all the way to the bank. Hell yeah! I think it. it's going to be the best action movie of the year. It looks without a doubt. You know what? I will throw one caution out. Towards it because I like you. I fucking text you. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Dude, did you watch that fucking okay. Furious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within yeah, the first yeah. hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it looks amazing. The cast looks phenomenal. Mm. Uh, it did make me chuckle that they had to put in um, a picture of a Morton Joe older yes. just for them to be like, so you know, he's him. Right. Yeah. Like, we're like, right. we got that, dude. But okay, whatever. <laughs> loved it. Loved it. However, the only one thing I will say is, there seems to be an awful lot of green screen going on. And I that's don't the only, know. Like there was no, a lot of no. shots of Anna Taylor Joy where she seemed to be like, you know, there was a yeah, few of her landing they, and stuff, and then like, yeah, like a they're, they're background stylistically, but, yeah. But, uh, but also, sorry, I just recently rewatched Three Hundred. Yeah, and I'm uh, like, yeah. you know what? If you go that kind of route, I'm yeah. cool with it. If, you know. As yeah. long as he can, as long as he can make the vehicles still, as long as that's real tactile, seem real, yeah. I never want to see a single CGI real. vehicle. Like in that he, he might yeah. be going over top. I my my only issue with this is that this is set before Fury Road, right? Yeah, many years. Yeah. So, um, spoilers, you know, uh, Fury Road is going to lose her arm. Well, you, see her, exactly. you see her with the robotic she's, she's going to get into the um, shit, but she I'm more interested now in what Joe's going to get fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like that's what I'm really interested in seeing is seeing how she climbs the ranks, how she gets up there. So then I can go. Now I'm going to watch Fury Road, exactly, and it's going to yeah. make the film even better. I'm I'm massively excited for it. I mean, Anna Taylor Joy could read the back of a fucking uh, ketchup bottle to me, and I'd fucking watch it for an hour <laughs> on repeat. <laughs> I don't think, oh, it, man, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think actually, it'll take you an hour as well. Actually, I was before say. we come off, I do want to do a quick thing. I know we've, we're wanting to get into the, this, uh, the middle section as quick as we can, mm-hmm. but I do want to bring up in the new section, and I, I think it's pretty big. I know a lot of people are just like, oh, we're going to switch off now because he's talking about wrestling. Oh, but okay, I can do. we oh, the biggest return of all time. The fucking return of CM Punk. Our truth. Oh, sorry. Uh, our truth. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, our truth as well. Our truth is still alive. Our truth is still fucking immoral. No, no. We had the return of CM Punk onto Monday Night Raw. And I, I, I just want to chuck this out now because obviously if you listen to this, there's a high chance in the January podcast or at least the February one when we're coming off the back of the Royal Rumble, like whole next year, fucking, you know, you want to talk about dramatic drama on TV. The world of wrestling is like all over the place at the moment. You know, we wanted this competition. Is closest, this is the closest to the Monday Night Wars we've been since. The yeah, Monday Night but that's Wars. it. We wanted some competition with some new well, TV group coming in and trying to take on WWE. I never believed it was ever going to happen. I never thought anybody could actually make the money or the impact that WWE have in the last fifty to sixty years. We had AEW come along. We had Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks and all those guys. Uh, trying to make this impact, which they kind of did, but they made such an impact. WWE turned around and went, "Hey, Cody, do you want to come back?" And they Look fucking brought him back. Money, Dick. You know, they turned around to one of their biggest female stars and said, "Hey, why don't you come to NXT?" And then with all the issues we've had this year involving Phil Brooks, CM Punk in AEW, having backstage fights with people <coughs> because he's pissed off, he didn't like the 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 atmosphere. I mean, I know uh, Gary doesn't really follow him, but. CM Punk was big in WWE in like 2006 to 2009. It's been 10 just years, after dude. It's been 10 years. Up, yeah. up to yeah. about 2013. Yeah, he had a lot of clashes with Triple H. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, he he had a lot him. of clashes with him on TV, the way that they were treating him, where the way the company was going. And so CM Punk ended up leaving, going away for seven years. He tried his hand at TV and movies, didn't work. Tried his hand at UFC, didn't, didn't work. work. Tried his hand at writing comic books, didn't work. Oh, it did actually. Did it? Oh, yeah, very successful with Marvel Comics. Really? Oh, yeah. That's why he's back on Raw. It, just because <laughs> someone stops doing something isn't because they fail. Well, no, I'm just saying they <laughs> didn't. No, I'm saying they didn't call no, him back he, and they didn't give him a proper a proper job for for a long enough period that he had to go back to the world of wrestling. Maybe that's where you know they always end up going back because they get that bite. But he ended up leaving AEW. He's gone to Monday Night Raw now. Um, a couple of people on Raw aren't happy. That could be a work. It's totally a work. Is that storytelling? Is it? Is it if it is, it's, fu- if it is, it's <laughs> right. fucking great storytelling because we're heading into the Royal Rumble in January, January 27th. Who's going to win? I, I fucking don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking Roman forward Reigns to it. Roman Reigns going to win. 
He can. He's already champion. Challenge he's, himself. He's, for he's the yeah, that's it. Yeah, I acknowledge myself yeah, no, to face myself. Will he not be defending the title? You know, now that the strikes are over, the Rock's not coming back. Well, yeah, they're going back to their TV yeah. and Cena's movie not coming careers. back. You know, yeah. so now it's it's a case of well, Cena's just pulling next? everybody over right now. Like, yeah, you're the new face. You're the new champion. You're yeah, the new... The, yeah, it, it's really interesting. But you got to remember the one the one thing that WWE are doing really good at the minute is they're doing really well with long form storytelling. So yes. I know a cut. We were talking about it the other day, and we we're saying about like, oh, there's a real good chance that you have like the last three in the Royal Rumble being say LA Knight, CM Punk, and Cody. Mm. And LA Knight yes. goes out just because everyone it will cause a massive reaction because yeah. people love LA Knight. Yeah, yeah. And then CM Punk will eliminate Cody. Cody will be doing the whole. I've got to finish the story. Yeah, and yeah. then what will happen is. Is CM Punk will challenge Seth for the title at WrestleMania, yes, and that Cody will win uh, elimination, elimination chamber. chamber. That that's probably really easy booking. But I mean, at the end of the day, the one big thing that CM Punk never got that he always wanted was that WrestleMania main event. I wouldn't be surprised though if they if they do turn around to him and say, "You can have it, but you're not going to have it next year. We're going to we're going to pull that taffy longer and go there." Because the other big rumor is who he will be fighting at WrestleMania. Well, the Austin one. Nah, Austin can't go. You watched WrestleMania last year, yeah. Where he had a match, <laughs> you can't. That, that wasn't a match, mate. That was Austin, started, you know, dropping a stunner, drinking if a you beer. Follow him if you follow him. Oh no, I mean it was good. Twenty minutes he went, but oh. yeah, it was still like it was an ass whooping. Just, right, but he would, you, dude, dude. If you he follow, if you follow Austin, if you follow Austin on his Instagram and all this stuff, he's in shape. Yeah, I don't he's think he's shape. not in the shape to go up against CM Punk. What? CM Punk versus Seth Rollins is even a push because after the injuries he got with AEW over the last year, Seth Rollins is in a better position, so he'd be doing a lot of the hard work. I, I just wouldn't be surprised if they, like I said, they pulled the taffy on it and they were sort of like, your WrestleMania main event. That's it. That's Cody, it. That's where we go Cody's watch Rumble. That's where we go watch Rumble. Never going to miss the Rumble. Yeah, Fucking that's it. Right. Hell, man. Yeah. Wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> well, on that note, I'll bring this segment to a close. Yes. We're going to take a very small break, but when we come back... We are going to be asking that question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yeah. Don't go Yippee anywhere. Kaye, motherfuckers. Yippee Kaye. And welcome back to the second part of the podcast where we are going to be asking that question, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Or, or technically, as I kind of thought of this segment, why people believe that Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie? Now, for me, when I first saw Die Hard, it was on a Saturday night. You know, the, the TV channel I was watching was doing like 80s action heroes over the course of a bunch of weekends. And Die Hard just happened to be on. It wasn't even Christmas. And I watched it. John McClane goes to a building, rescues his wife from fucking Hans Gruber, played by Alan Rickman. Spoilers. A fucking Spoilers, everybody. <laughs> terrorist kind of robber. And it was a fucking badass movie. And as I grew up and as I had Christmas more and more, it ended up just being there firmly on my list of a movie that you had to watch Christmas. You have your Santa Claus, the movie, you have your cra- uh, Krampus, you know, you have your oh, It's Krampus a Wonderful a Life I love and Hell Trade yeah. in Places. And for me, mine was Die Hard. Now, I started watching this at Christmas time when I was, you know, 18, 19. You know, I had to watch Die Hard every Christmas. It's a fucking Christmas movie. So then as the years went on, I had that I faced that argument a lot of times. It's not it, a Christmas movie. It got, it got movie. traction in po- popular culture as well, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. With the bar of the internet, everyone talking about yeah. everyone discussing everything on social media. It became part of pop culture as well. Yeah, and, and Die Hard the series didn't exactly die down. You know, we had the second one, which was set Christmas again. You know, and then we had the third one set in the 90s, which I still believe is a superior uh trilogy movie to a lot of other trilogies what, vengeance uh yeah vengeance with Jeez, fucking fucking samuel yeah, jackson is fucking great die hard 4 was its burst into the 2000s you know could we bring john McClain up to it's present Kevin day Smith in it. oh it's got <laughs> timothy oliphant in it it's true fucking yeah. amazing movie but i don't think it's an amazing movie <laughs> then after that it's not a great film no a good was it a good day to die hard oh, with yeah. um What's his and face? that was how Die Hard died. Terminator Genesis. <laughs> yeah, and I always go to Spartacus because Spart- Spart- he was in that. Well. Obviously, it was Captain Boomerang. Captain Jay, Boomerang. Yeah, Courtney? Jay Courtney. Courtney? Yeah, Deep yeah. Deep pool. Yeah. Six beers in, nailed it. What, what cemented this series for me was it, every year it just kept cementing that Die Hard, the original, the 1988, 1988 movie, is not only a great action movie, but it's also a great Christmas movie. 
why so, do okay, people, so what so all right and why do people believe it's not? Well first of all, why is it a Christmas movie? Because of all the attachments it has towards Christmas. Okay. So what are those? Well, obviously you have the initial Christmas music that's added in, the Christmas theme that it's set on Christmas it, Eve. It's set at Christmas, isn't it? The Christmas it's set period. at Christmas. Yep. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, you can get into the... the, the, the but, by the way, I, agree, I believe it is a Christmas movie as well. So I'm just, I might just but, play devil's advocate here or there. See, see, now that's the case. So obviously, I didn't want it to become that kind of conversation, really, because obviously we. You, well, there, otherwise, there this conversation might be over very quickly. Yeah, I was going to say we're, we're all just well, like, no, no, yeah. no. See, because you think. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because you think why? To your point, to your point. Why do people believe it's not? But you've got a you've got a system. You've, I I, so I think, I think you should explain your system. Okay, because I, I think that might help. Because honestly, right here's the thing: is I personally think I'll do mine real quick, actually, in a way. But mm-hmm. I think that for a lot of people. Christmas movies have to be specifically like it's about Santa losing one of his reindeer and having to deliver his presents and he doesn't manage to do it but the kids yeah. help him and he gets there yeah. again and that's a present and that's fine or it's about ghosts coming back to go or look how exactly, awful you've been that's fine. <laughs> I think, now personally for me it's it's really any movie that makes me feel fucking Christmassy Festive. whatever that is yes it's just where I'm like sat at home like man the lights are all on the decorations are up I've got time off from work we're about to eat all the fucking food I've yeah. got my girls yeah. with me yeah. that's my Christmas feeling so if it evokes that then I'm like that's my big tick for it. You've got a three-point system. I do. <laughs> so and I want to hear about the three-point system. if a, if a movie system. hits two of those ticks, two, two. I consider it a Christmas movie. Yes. Uh, out of three. So if you get two of three, if you get three out of three, you are an actual, Christmas personified. absolutely personified Christmas movie. Just like Santa Claus the movie. <laughs> Sorry, Will in the chat like, don't ticks. be soft, have a fight. Like, no, we're not. <laughs> this isn't, this isn't going to be terrifying and fucking Ghostbusters all over again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> Okay, so and that sorry, but that's a really good point in chat. Is like um, I'm not Ronin is, but any movie you watch at Christmas time, Christmas movie. It's like uh, that's an no. interesting point, man. Because like well, we, we've talked about how there's there's Christmas movies and there's movies you watch at Christmas. We'll get yes, into the that, two yeah, different but, categories. Yes. This I'd is say. good. This is why it's a good. But, but before yeah. I get into my three point system as well, I was yeah. going to say that Christmas movies, as debatable as they are, the uh, Christmas movie is not a genre. Yeah. So yeah. it's an action movie that happens to be a Christmas movie. It's a horror movie that happens mm-hmm. to be a Christmas movie. It's a comedy movie that happens to be a, be a Christmas, Christmas movie. movie. Um, so it's hard to classify. And so I honestly do think that Christmas movies are down to your own interpretation as to what yes. makes yes. it yes. a Christmas movie. Like Andy just said, if it's a film that makes you feel festive, then it's a Christmas movie to you. Like no one can take that away from you and tell you. That's not a Christmas movie because if it makes you feel good, makes you f- get into the spirit of things. Don't Totes. Fuck what yeah. anyone else has to say whether Die Hard oh, is yeah. or isn't a Christmas movie. However, I it do is. have my yeah. own yeah. three point system, and these are the things that I would consider what I would classify as a Christmas movie. So the very first one is: is it set on Christmas Eve? Is it set on Christmas Day? Also including the American films as well. Is it set on Thanksgiving or is it also set on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day? So the holiday kind of time zone is from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day. So, uh, so any November movie in 24th that period, to like. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so. Because uh, usually films Black Friday have to sale. run up to them, yeah. <laughs> so End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger is a Christmas movie? No. It's set on New Year's Eve. Yeah, but it's that's no, one wait, no, of it, my it, three it point system. You've got to let him get through his system. Yeah, but yeah, we have, yeah, but yeah. it has just scored one point. Yeah, yeah. it has just scored, it's one, scored point. one point. Yeah. Okay, then my point number two is that it has to include traditional Christmas characters. So we're talking Jesus. <laughs> Sa- I mean, it's his birthday. I God don't damn know why it. You I know, Every I know, time he says I Jesus, know, and I you just, were like, "Why Jesus?" I just. Like, <laughs> I just it's like, like no, find no, the motherfucker I, a card. It's I'm his not, birthday, dude. The thing, the thing that I'm laughing at is, is, is that yeah, yeah, like you don't see many Jesus movies. Yes, that's it. True. You don't see like so. So, so Mr. Hanky, is that what I'm supposed to say? The Last Temptation. <laughs> the Last Temptation of Christ. Christ. I was, I was thinking Passion Christ. of the Christ. So Passion the of the Christ scores one point. Scores one point because it's because it's got Jesus in it. Life, Life of Brian, Brian. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> okay, so it's going to have Jesus in it, Santa Claus, yeah. Rudolph, Frosty, yeah. Krampus, the elves. You know, they, they don't need to be the lead part either. Yeah. They can still feature in mm-hmm. it or be a part of it. Or Lord of the Rings turn has got up elves in. Not <laughs> oh, those elves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think I saw a bell at one point. So that, that's my second point fight. system. There's no. <laughs> and my third point, which again, it, it can, it's not as tight, I'd say, as the other ones, but it has to have traditional themes of love, hope, generosity, 
faith, redemption, family, and fear. So, in I, I like I like to think that that can be broken down. That whole thing that you just said it, there the, can be the broken down thing. as a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. any time a Christmas miracle happens, and a, and a Christmas miracle, I would also like to say, because I, I like, like when I thought about this theme, it was very easy to get into a whole massive debatable argument and get it down to the real nitty gritty grey matter of what we're trying to say makes a Christmas movie, even though the Christmas theme doesn't doesn't exist, but something where the odds are, are stacked against the main character at the start. And he overcomes the odds by the end. That's just and saves story that's every movie. Yeah, and set no, no, but specifically for saves Christmas. Christmas. Specifically that's... for Christmas, he has to save Christmas for the other people who are in that movie. That's what makes the miracle. And what I mean by this is, like I said, I I, I thought about this theme. I was walking around. And I was talking to people about it, and you know, I had discussions with people where people stood there and went, "No." Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, and I will tell you why. And I, I listened to them, even though inside I was screaming like, "Fuck you, man! Fuck you! You're so wrong." The Christmas listen- test for friendships now. I well- just, again, all I do is hear that in Trump's voice. It was like, "This is why Die Hard's not a Christmas movie." And internally, he's like, "You're wrong." Like- <laughs> <laughs> well, did you, but like I said, Gary's got the three point system. But I just, you know, has I mean, to, that's that's mine. You you, has, you can evaluate. That's a good. That's anyway. a good like, but system. those are I like, I like actually. The basics. Those are really the basics. And like I said, I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay, so sorry, sorry. Tying it into your theme. Yes. So this was your theme. Yeah. So to bring you back on track. So using Gary's system. Yeah. Tell me why Die Hard's a Christmas movie. So, so I, go point by so. I'm going to use the it. The first one's no, very easy, obviously. Well, you've got to really branch out and compare it to other Christmas movies in that. No, movie. I was asking you to use his system. <laughs> Take Home Alone, for example. Right. Right? Home Alone is a Christmas movie because... Small boy stays at home over the Christmas period, specifically <laughs> twenty three. You yes. sound like his parents. <laughs> uh, he stayed at home. Like, bitch, you 24th, left him. Twenty fourth, twenty fifth. You know, you abandoned your child. You go in a prison. I, and it, like it, it feels longer, but it's at least a couple of days that you know uh, Macaulay Kevin. Culkin and Kevin is, is stuck at the house. <laughs> he goes up against terrible odds. He's got the two burglars coming in to take him, take care of his house. He's home alone and cannot tell anybody oh, doesn't doing. doesn't call the police doesn't really get involved he actually brings them down that's basically die hard for kids yeah and so using the three point system if if home alone is traditionally two thirds i'll even say a christmas movie it runs the same storyline and theme as die hard which in itself yeah, is a Christmas see, movie. for me, I give Home Alone. It gets two out of three on the Christmas spectrum. But, but they it's also a, go, making it a Christmas movie. But in my eyes, they also go to church. Yeah, and and see There's kind of the baby Jesus. Christmas there. So yeah. that's yeah. It, that yeah. hits three. That hits three. And it's a Christmas miracle. And know? it's a the Christmas miracle. Home, the, thanks to John Candy. The mum gets home. The Kevin Christmas miracle is that he doesn't break his neck on that makeshift <laughs> fucking. <It's>, there, <laughs> there are so many different things. Now, now, like you said, you can take the most easiest example. Which is a Christmas Carol. Now, the, every the iteration. Muppets, yeah. Well, no, every iteration. No, no, no. Yeah, that, that's the best one, dude. A Christmas the best Carol. It's the Muppets, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you said, Screws, Muppets Christmas Carol, fucking George C. Fucking um, Scott's fucking Christmas mm-hmm. Carol, Patrick Stewart mm-hmm. uh, as Ebenezer Screws, fucking Alistair Sim. Going all the way back. Now, there's not really a lot of visualization of Jesus in that movie, going by the three point no. system. Which one? Um, Muppet's Christmas Carol. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, any version of obviously a Christmas Carol, but it's again a man going up against the odds, and much like John McClane, you know, John's lost his wife. Well, I, I was going to say I, for Christmas Carol, it's redemption, isn't it? It's about that whole movie's about self reflection yeah. and redemption. And the yeah. fear part is the ghosts as well. Of the, the horror to, to to tell the story. The Christmas yeah. miracle that it all took place all in one night. Yeah. You know, and he was able to get back for Christmas Eve. Now, and how good is Jim Carrey in that animated one? He's that Robert Zemeckis one. That's a fucking badass movie. Dude. But like I said, using the three point system that Gary's got, or just using other films as an example, how people can still stand there and say, "Well, hold on, I don't see." Cr- uh, die Hard as a Christmas movie when it ticks the same boxes as a lot of I, I think that you might have nailed it when you said about the whole thing of 
um, Christmas movies not being a genre. So people just like, it's an action movie. It's just an action movie. You know yeah. I mean? But I, I'm starting to like, when you, you said this to me before we actually started the podcast, when you said, oh, it's not a genre. It's interesting. Like, it's not actually a genre. It's just like you said, it's a comedy movie that's that's a Christmas movie. I'm like, yeah. now nah, do you know what? I'm not sure I agree with that. I think that they are, I think they are a genre just simply because there's, there's movies that when you go, do you want to watch this movie? And it's fucking July. I'll go, <laughs> no, it's a Christmas movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I almost feel like that makes it into a, into a, a seasonal thing. And I mean, like, and I know, I yeah. know that there's a question coming, I think about like my favorite Christmas movies and stuff. But it's not spoiled straight away. Like nobody watches Die Hard in my house until Christmas Eve. Well, I should we think watch it's also Die Hard. Christmas starts when Hans Gruber falls off that motherfucking like. Because <laughs> Die Spoilers. Hard released in July. Yes, yeah. it did. Oh, it didn't release even close to Christmas or even no, close to the holidays. No. So they didn't know it what wasn't they even had. advertised they as a Christmas movie. They didn't know what movie. they had. So, well, it's because if you, they if didn't you intend that to make a now, Christmas movie. If you release that movie now, yeah, it, there's no way it wouldn't release at Christmas. I agree, yeah, because yeah. well, it, it well, makes well, sense look, to. Well, you look at the movies that are following. We've also got, um, you know, Silent Night coming up. Yeah, which it's, it's releasing it, Christmas time. That's yeah. going to be basically Die Hard style kind of fucking. But that's also being advertised as that. Well, that Die Hard so wasn't and then we also had Violent Night. Was it Violent Night with uh, David Harbour? Oh, yeah. that was great. For that. Which is Die Hard Two, but right? with Santa Claus. Right, hundred percent. You know? But I'm I'm just trying to say some why some of the why the reasons why some people would argue that yeah. Die Hard is not a Christmas movie and the fact that it came out in July the fact that it had no Christmas promotion at all around it is why people go it's just an action movie that takes place at Christmas so for them it is not and also Bruce Willis has said in numerous interviews yeah I'm the main I've been that film and it's not a Christmas movie so when. John McClane turns to you and says it's not a Christmas movie. Some people might be inclined to go, well, I believe him. He's the no, star. That's Bruce Willis. No, I'll disagree. agree with what he says. I was going to say. <laughs> but don't... then the writer for Die Hard has come out and said, um, I wrote the damn thing. It's a fucking Christmas movie. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's this, but we get this with actors and directors that agree and disagree. Replicant, yeah. not a replicant, you know. Oh, yeah. So, right. well, uh... so what are your, um, what are you, you've got a list of things that make it not a Christmas movie. So what are your... So yeah, I got my my yippee, oh, no, yippee kind of uh, yeah. which is the you know like also Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street was also released in a summer. Yeah, and that's blatantly a Christmas movie. That's blatantly so a Christmas movie. Sometimes the scheduling and the release dates don't mm-hmm. really coincide with the theme of the film. Um, so although Die Hard takes place on Christmas, its primary primary genre is the action genre. Mm-hmm. You know, Die Hard does not move beyond the action genre in the entire runtime. It does not employ Christmas themes or storylines in any way. Therefore, Die Hard is an action film that just happens to take place on Christmas. Therefore, it is not a Christmas movie because you can take all of the Christmas elements out of Die Hard and Die Hard doesn't really change one beat at all. Except... Characters are whistling do, or singing Christmas that. songs, what which could be Christmas replaced movie. with anything else. So the decorations in the office, you could decorate them with Halloween ornaments. You know, it doesn't you know affect is, the film in any way. It's like the difference between sort of like, if you could have a Christmas song, yeah? And, yeah. If you, and all you've got to do is like, or you could just take any song. If you replace that snare drum with sleigh bells, right. it's going to sound like a Christmas it's song. Sound, exactly. Here's a question though. Mm. Right. So take, for example, the David Harbour Santa Claus movie. Right. If he was still Santa Claus and if he still went to a child's He's house, Santa Claus. That's, that's Christmas movie. Take one. <laughs> take one. But the film's not set at Christmas. He's mm-hmm. just travelling the globe in the middle of July. Yeah. And just happens across this girl's so house. So still just a one point there. so far. Yeah. So okay. he just goes in there and then he ends up just taking everybody out to but save the girl. But so but then he gets the, that's where the second tick comes and then, in. Yeah. And then and so he redeems himself, <laughs> yeah. which makes him want to go back and finish off doing Christmas that year. Yeah. So then you see, would that make it a Christmas movie? Yeah, I yeah, I think it's a Christmas movie. Definitely. What Violent Night? Yeah, but no, yeah. I'm just saying if you obviously if you change the time aspect, like we said, one of the mm. major points is it has to take place over Christmas. Oh, I see. Sorry. So if you yeah. took, over that if you still had period. Santa Claus, yeah. but he's in July trying to save a fucking. It's, you get two out of three, not three Christmas out of three. In, July. in my scale. <laughs> Man, so many Steve Gutenberg movies have now become superior Christmas movies. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, just as another one is uh, for me, like some people would say that Jaws: The Revenge 
is a Christmas movie. Yes, it takes place like, on Christmas Eve. Yeah, it takes place on Christmas Eve, but then that's it. That's the only tick it gets. Fear. Yeah. Fear, sir. Fear. Redeems herself by killing the shark. Fear. That's two points. So you fucked yourself when you scale, because you're basically, if <laughs> yeah, anyone I, feels mate, any emotion mate, whatsoever, I it's Christmas. Spent, I've spent like two weeks. You're wrong. I've, been, <laughs> I, I've spent two weeks thinking of how this conversation would go, oh, and mate. I've spent 20 oh, years yeah, having this conversation with a bunch of people. The three-point system that Gary made up is the basic three-point system that anybody has to distinguish what makes a Christmas movie. Love Actually, like I said, you remove Christmas, Christmas from it. Right, Christmas movie. You remove I'm Christmas. I'm still not over what Alan Rickman did. But if you remove Christmas from it, it's like like Gary said, it's just it's just your bog standard, love standard, love story movie about people going around, obviously, making relationships. But because you put the Christmas theme in there and you have all the Christmas aspect, it gives it that second point because people redeem themselves. They have... The Christmas Miracle. Do you know what, dude? Yeah. Love Actually is such a Christmas movie that I can say this because I know it's not like because my wife's not going to watch the stream or anything. Right, so, right. But I, I bought her a necklace, mm. uh, uh, one of her Christmas presents, and it comes in this perfect like square box. Nice. I was this close to printing like that Joni Mitchell CD cover to put on it, oh, just to give that to her. Like, yeah, one of the girls in the office is really happy. Like <laughs> that would that would that would that would break you. But talking about Christmas miracles. John McClane jumping off the top of the building at the end when he's obviously hit well, the, the, the explosion. The miracle occurs exploded. way earlier because if I stand on a Lego barefoot, <laughs> I'm done for the day. Right. The fact that he makes it through all that glass and then continues on with his day is like, I'm jumping out of the building then. Right. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> this is what we're saying. Like, as you get older, like per- people like myself, you'd be at a Christmas party somewhere and you'd be thinking, where are the exits? You know, what would happen if a group of armed men ran into this Christmas party right now and took everybody off? I love stage? how your first instinct is to leave the room. Right, like, yeah, well, Terrorists! Yeah. Oh, where are the exits? Man, I thought <laughs> Linda thought of the same thing as I did. <laughs> well, a lot of the time, John McClane's first plan is to get to the stairs and get away from the guys. That's so true. that he can obviously... You know, assess the situation, assess the and situation and some and and so obviously some elevator my ass would be in an air vent in like 50 fucking seconds checking out where the elevators were you know I, what are you I, looking for an elevator for in an air vent <laughs> quick, there's no one in here there's no one around here either this is going to be a long night Dawn of the Dead taught me that yeah <laughs> <sighs> So um, I've actually, I, I mean, I just rewatched Die Hard today and I sat there with pen and paper. I haven't watched, watched it yet. It's too oh, yeah, early. I'm dying to watch it. it. You die I, hard. I do apologize. It die might be too early for you, but I, Die Hard is not a part of my actual Christmas lineup of movies. That is true. Uh, that I don't true. usually watch it around Christmas. Yeah. I usually, I'd watch it sometimes during the year, but I've never really watched it around Christmas time. Uh, I don't know why, but I, I for me, it's Scrooge and Gremlins and... You know, uh, Christmas Carol and a couple of others. Gremlins is great. Yeah. Scrooge is the double bill. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Scrooge yeah. and then Die Hard on Christmas Eve. Because nice. I, again, I, I physically, the most Christmassy I feel yeah. is during that speech that Bill Murray gives. Yeah, absolutely. By that yeah. point, I'm yeah. fucking streaming because I'm just yeah. like, this is amazing. This is yeah. the best fucking Because you've been wrapped up in this character and, and you've absolutely. seen his redemption. Absolutely. You've yeah. learned with him as it as it goes. And so, yeah, it's it's wonderfully done. Um, so, yeah, I rewatched uh, Die Hard today. It's actually been um, a few years, maybe five or so years since I've seen the film. Wow. And I, was, I, was, I was a little bit apprehensive because I was like, I'm not really in the mood for it. I'm not really in the mood for this Christmas malarkey thing. You know, <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I want to literally just make notes of all the Christmas stuff that that screams out of the film to me to make me, you know, go definitively. Yeah, I, I believe it's a Christmas movie, which yeah. I do anyway. I just yeah. wanted to be able to back it up when I say it. Yeah. So, going through the film, uh, first thing first is uh, it takes place at a Christmas party, and it takes place on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Uh, sleigh bells ring. At the one minute fifty second mark, when the Die Hard title comes up, so that's three things within the first two minutes of the film. Uh, we've got Christmas trees yeah. and decorations. We've got wishes of Happy Christmas and Happy New Year. Fucking There's California. talk of Christmas, huh. chestnuts, mold wine, family. There's mention of Scrooge and Santa Claus all within the first five minutes of the film. John's wife is named Holly. Fuck you. I can't believe I've never put that together. (laughs) Wow. Um, uh, When he's in the limousine with Argyle, he says, you you got any Christmas music? And he's like, this is Christmas music. As he's playing uh, the Run DMC Christmas track. 
Uh, and we get another, we get several giant Christmas trees at Nakatomi Plaza. And then 10 minutes into the film, John McClane is whistling a Christmas tune. Because this is all in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, we also get 12 villains that crash the party. Hmm. 12 days of Christmas. 12 days of Christmas. Uh, we also get lots of Christmas imagery. There's Santa Claus hats and Santa statues. There's Christmas lights. And of course, the ho, 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 I've got a machine gun, um, which is just, uh, yeah, just a, a great moment. Now, yeah. again, you could take that again, going back to what I was saying earlier about taking all the Christmas stuff out. He could put something else on that T-shirt, something else clever or witty ha, or ha, funny. Ha. I just killed your brother. Right, just anything, yeah. But I'm just saying it, it's possible. But that but it, moment it, but it is just, a Christmas just covers moment. him in swastikas. Without, and then <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Without, the, without the Christmas theme, it just becomes a generic action, 80s action movie. It does, movie. yeah. yeah. With, With the, the Christmas th- nature, it kind of adds a layer to it. Which, yeah. yeah. Yeah, agreed. And makes it a Christmas movie. Uh, Powell, uh, Sergeant Powell. Uh, there's two incidences uh, of him humming a Christmas tune, and the second time it's followed by the sleigh bells ringing, which is usually when you know shit's about to go down. There are Santa Claus statues and ornaments, and Christmas trees that get shot and destroyed during the crossfire. It's like anti-Christmas. Sheeston but... Finster, <laughs> huh? Sheeston Finster. Shoot the glass. Shoot, Shoot the glass. The glass. <laughs> Uh, and then there's the giant uh, then the safe opens you've got the Christmas music that mm-hmm. swells up mm-hmm. and there's also 18 mentions of the word Christmas so with Mate, all if this of was on that, trial yeah. you would have just literally delivered your like closing yeah. fuck you argument on that one it's like, just like Die Hard is a Christmas movie <laughs> oh my god it's, it's a, such a Christmas movie it's a Christmas movie and the beauty, beautiful thing about Die Hard is also pre-2000 it's one of the original kind of Christmas movies. Like I said, with movies like Miracle on 34th Street and fucking The Grinch and, and, and like I said, Die Hard, they were just movies you watched at Christmas. Yeah. They just happened to be on because they were Christmas themed. Well, also, TV... also as well, you got to remember, it's like we all grew up, with, for the most part, with four channels. Yeah. yeah. And it was like there were certain movies were only on terrestrial TV at certain times of the year. We just took, we just yeah. noticed in the break, didn't we? We said about oh, Labyrinth was released in like 1986 today. Yeah. You know, I always associate Labyrinth as like a a movie I watch at Christmas because when I was a kid, it's like well, that's the only time I could watch it. Is when like, it did, you it just finally fucking show it. Yeah. So I didn't have the VHS and I didn't have Sky or whatever. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. Just, just watching movies at a certain time, obviously Die Hard just fits so easily into the Christmas regime. And I, I get the idea of why people don't watch it. People do acknowledge that it is a Christmas movie wrong. and could be watching it at Christmas, <laughs> but they choose movie not to because is. there are so many <laughs> other better. I really enjoy The Long Kiss Goodnight. I think that's a great Christmas movie. And yeah, it right? ticks at least two out of the three boxes yeah, that agreed. I know of yeah. to become a Christmas movie. It's not as good as Die Hard. And... To, to, but what is? To, to, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tip off my argument here about the movie. Just see how it goes. The fact that the first movie was such a success on all of its laurels, they made a sequel. Yeah. Die Hard Two, Die Harder. Genius. Fucking genius. Fucking, just fucking die. Oh, you ever wrote like, that? Just oh, I'd love to have been in the room. I'd love to have been in the room. It seems stupid, and people will acknowledge that it's not as good as the first one. But let's just look at some of its laurels. Because Die Hard Two, Die Harder, is a what? A Christmas, Christmas movie. movie. Yeah, it's the same shit. It is yeah. the exact. How's the same, same shit, shit happening the same guy twice? As die yeah. Hard. And so, thus, if Die Hard One is a Christmas movie, then Die Hard Two falls exactly under that kind of same laurels because of being set on Christmas Eve for having a guy going up against multiple dangerous odds and taking it all on and proceeding to do Christmas miracles. They knew what they were doing. They they saw the success of Die Hard 1 and went, what worked? John McClane shooting a bunch of guys at Christmas. Yeah, Just change the location and do it again. Just do it again. <laughs> yeah. A year fucking later and everybody buys it nobody ever sits there and goes you know what's a shit action movie die hard to die harder it's fucking terrible nah 
You you if you if you're any kind of diehard fan or Christmas fan, you should be doing them back to back or at least one before the other. Yeah, I do. I, I, because I do watch them both. Over I haven't seen period. Die Hard two in over twenty years. Man it is <laughs> badass. <laughs> Robert Patrick's in it. Shatner, fucking dude, um, I have no idea. Of the William rest of the fucking Shatner. Shatner uh, William yeah. Sadler. Sorry, Sadler. Okay, from yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he's playing the general. The whole concept. The only thing I remember is that John McClane at one point uses the ejector seat to launch himself. Yeah, that's the best bit. Yeah, that's the only poster thing, shot. That's that was the, the poster only shot. thing I can remember from Man, that film. It's, it, it seems and the line you mentioned earlier. It seems yeah. ludicrous, but like I said, after Die Hard Four, where he was driving a truck yeah. up a fucking freeway and a jet fucking was yeah, chasing yeah. him, yeah. Die Hard Two looks so fucking plausible. Him on the wing of the plane, fucking yeah. fighting the guy. You know, yippee ki yay. The fact that it snows at the end of Die Hard Two because it's proper snow, and at the end of Die Hard it's paper, but they make it look like snow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's my closing argument. So if you've got anything, you know, oh, Die, no, Die mean, Hard, Christmas. Hey, dude, movie. I was with you from the start. It's a <laughs> yeah, I, I'm already in agreement that Die Hard is, in my opinion, a Christmas movie. I just wanted to be able to validate it, it from my perspective as to why Totes. I think yeah, it is a yeah. Christmas movie. Yeah, that's uh, it. With some you know argument, but I also wanted to play devil's advocate and also argue why people might consider it not being one because thematically. Christmas movies tend to be much more family orientated and not, you know, Krampus or horror level. So, you know, and, and, you know, and Die Hard features like like Paul Verhoeven style bloody squibs and explosions, yeah. you know, and it's pretty grisly and nasty the way some of these get Man, killed. Man, the red, the pop, the way the red pops on the snow. There's also nudity, so you know, a sex scene gets interrupted at one point as mm. this lady's dragged out wearing next to nothing. Yeah. You know, and so things like that detract away from the wholesomeness that is usually a family, you know, you know, gathering. So, yeah. but yeah, overall, I still think that Christmas movies are down to the individual's, you know, own way of going. Does that movie make me feel festive? Does it give me the Christmas spirit? Am I excited? Am I feeling positive from it? Then, then yeah, it's a Christmas movie for you, even if it only ticks one of of those boxes. You know. Do you know what? Our, uh, do you know what Christmas movie we watched the other day together to, that we wanted to watch with the kids as well? And she fucking loved it. What? Santa's sleigh with uh, Bill, Bill Goldberg. Goldberg. Yeah, <laughs> fucking hilarious, dude! Great Christmas movie. I yeah. got that on DVD. Same. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So I think all three of us are in agreement. Die Hard Die is Christmas movie. a Christmas well, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just to, just to cement at home for those that are listening, you know, when you, when you get into a conversation with somebody and they turn to you and they say, "I don't believe Die Hard is a Christmas movie," send them this way. Get them to listen to this. We break it down. We 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 analyze this motherfucker. There is no way you can dispute. The argumentative proof that Die Hard One and Die Hard Two are Christmas movies. I tell you what. Well, here's the thing, though. Is we we were talking about this before we started, saying about like um, New Year's resolutions and stuff like that. So, all this this whole thing of sort of like people that are like it is a Christmas movie. No, it's not. There's so many things like at the minute that are so people are so fucking passionate about that mm. mean nothing. It's really <laughs> there are some big issues that everyone's really passionate about as well. Mm-hmm. But if anyone's gonna do a New Year's resolution, I'm just gonna say this to, like seriously, this is like a challenge to anyone out there who it's applicable to. It might right. not be applicable to you too. Okay. You need to stop being so fucking tribal. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Just if you are that type of person, you need to stop being so fucking tribal. Can I, I said you to break you, it down to well, me? I, I, had, yeah. I, had someone, I had someone. I had someone. I don't want day, to be tribal. Well, I had. I had not, You're not, not tribal. Argument, but I was listening to someone that said about. Um, they were talking about PC gaming. Okay. Now, like, and I mostly the just elitism play on of PC gaming. Yeah, exactly. And they were, yeah. You know, they're yeah. oh, like, if you're not playing on PC, you're fucking gaming wrong. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, what the Damn. fuck are you even talking about? And I did. I had. A, I tried to. They're only a young guy, but. I was trying to have a conversation with him. I said, well, dude, I said, I, t- I tend to, if I want a game, I tend to do it on consoles because I know I can just get the fucking game, put it in my Xbox, and it will play, and I'm done. I said, if you want to spend all this money on this amazing rig and, like, have the graphics, at the you know, so that motherfucker's about to explode, at the, like, you know, because of how intense the graphics are. If that's how you chill and you enjoy games, fucking you do you, dude. I hope you love every minute of it. Well, I even brought you up where I said, like, i got a friend of mine who just fucking lives on his Switch because he loves... The idea that you can walk around and use it, that's not how I personally like to play games, but more power to him. Why? It's like, why have you got to be so fucking like, no, you have to do it the way I do it. Fuck you. you know, like, that's how and it, and it comes in so much. It comes in with movies. It comes in, it's huge in like, you know, people's politics, you know, and so much that's going on. So if anyone's going to do something for Christmas, maybe if, if you're like that with anything, maybe just take a step back. 
Let people enjoy shit. Let people have fucking Christmas movies as Christmas movies. Yes. Let people not have Christmas movies if they don't want to as well and realise like, that they don't let want them to. Be. Yeah. Just, yeah, but the whole point of this segment is to prove to people that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I, that's, the, that's, the, that's the abolishment of the tribalism. No, 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 but, no, but, no, but I get that. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. No, but I get that. I get that. Yeah. But also, like I said, if, if you don't want to watch fucking Die Hard at Christmas, don't fucking watch Die Hard at Christmas. John McClane's not got a gun to your fucking head. But you should watch Die Hard at Christmas. You should probably watch Die Hard at Christmas. It's fucking, it's fucking baller. It's, it's, yeah. it's a good movie. <laughs> good movie? It's a great movie. It is a great movie. It's a great, I, great I agree. movie. It's a great movie. I mean, good movie <laughs> on a, on a, on a <laughs> sub-level. Good, yeah, that, we could talk about Die Hard for hours. <laughs> We well, we got a long Chris. Uh, we got a long question section now. Yeah, well, we have a fair few like, questions, so I think this is a good moment to bring this yes, segment to yes. a close. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We are going to take a very small break, but when we come back, we will be answering your questions. Yes, yes. and welcome back to the third part of the podcast, where we will be answering your questions. Yes. Yeah. First question is from David Allen Evans. What up, David? What's up? Merry Christmas, chaps. Can you think of any time studio interference has improved a film? I think I'm right in assuming you guys are usually on the side of the creatives over the money men. But I recently saw Little Shop of Horrors for the first time and I actually prefer the original happy ending mm. as I think it suits the tone of the film better. Yeah. Also, while not exactly what Peter uh, William Peter Blakely wanted, I think the exorcism added to Exorcist 3 and it gives the film a catharsis it didn't have in its original version. Curious what you think. Now, I, I, I've, I've prepared some answers already to this one. Right. Uh, and I just want to say... Um, uh, in the original script uh, uh, for Alien, it was, mm. it was called Star Beast. Yeah. The studio changed the title <laughs> to Alien. Also, the studio added the character of Ash the Android, which was not in the original script. So, for me, the fact that it's called Alien, like, I can't imagine, you know, the Star Beast series of films. <laughs> oh that, that's like, it. You know, st studio interference is really, really difficult to narrow down to when they've actually done good. It is. Because they is. usually fuck up so much. He, he's got one of the best examples in Little Shop of Horrors. I only watched that recently again. Yeah. I love that film growing up. Yeah. I only watched it recently online where it showed me the original ending. And, and it was then, when yeah. I was showing the kid for the first time. And she was mm. like, well, that was a downer. I was like, that wasn't, yeah, wasn't the ending. ending. I remember. What the fuck was <laughs> that? Yeah, when, when yeah. I oh, take yeah, over the so world. Weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You see him on the Statue of Liberty and stuff like that. So, yeah, I agree. I think, um, sorry, I know you've got a list, but I, I was yeah. just going to say, um, I know that the studio added in Rogue One, the fucking best Star Wars scene the personally Darth Vader I've ever fucking finale. seen. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Just, yeah, give me that all day. So I got a mouthful of beer. Just trying to swallow <laughs> yeah. it quickly because I saw, the, I heard the silence. <laughs> That's like, how I'm still trying to think. I'm trying to think. What, I, what I, you think? I'll, I can just I'll list my all, others. All, 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 the only thing I can only think of when stu studios interfered and it fucked it up. I'm trying to think of like Where other ones. Yeah. It's true. Where they actually did something really good. And I can't, because they always fuck up badly. Aye, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but this is another one that uh, struck a chord with me, is that it was Universal Studios that insisted that Michael Gross play the part of Burt Gummer. The director uh. didn't want this. The cast and crew didn't want this. They were like, Michael Gross, he's in that, that American sitcom. He's no way is he going to be Burt Gummer. I got one. But then when he turned up at the audition... Freaking nailed it, and I can't imagine the Tremors franchise would have continued yeah, that's if they one. had I not mean, listened he to Universal Studios. He's the only constant for the most he part. Is, isn't yeah, he? he is the constant. Is, yeah. He becomes the main character. Um, Kurt Russell, Big Trouble in Little China. Originally, he was one in. Well, originally he needed. He he was one in Dennis Dunn to be the main character, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And so the studio was like, nobody's going to buy this. We want you to bring in an American. We want John character. Wayne. So he brings in Kurt Russell to play the action hero, and that's where we get Jack Burton from because yeah. John Carpenter writes the dumbass sidekick. The dumbass but he's sidekick. He's the lead, but that's he's the, the dumbass the sidekick. That, I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sat here. I got one. I'm gonna get a John Carpenter one. Go John I mean, Carpenter he also one. do like because John Carpenter he had to deal with studio interference with Halloween two, which may have, you know, led to that film's success. Was that the mandate was more gore, more violence this yeah. time? Yeah, which of course. Carpenter didn't want, but mm -hmm. did that help the film? It definitely critically or well, he commercially didn't direct it though, either. The film. He didn't direct it. Somebody no. else directed it. So 
But they, that's where they were pushing the, the yeah. story, yeah. Um, I do have yeah. another one, though, is that the famous scene in Predator, where all of them are lined up firing their guns. Yeah. That was a studio interference. <sighs> Man, they, that's they, bullet porn, that, uh, isn't it? They, they uh, literally right. turned up and said, there's not enough macho gun firing in the film. Go put some more in. <laughs> See, yeah. And we got that scene from oh, the studio I, interference. I was brilliant. sat here wondering in my head, did the studio interfere and get rid of Jean-Claude Van Damme? No, Van Damme or, just or, backed no, out. That, that was something else. But I, you I bring it up the anyway. Fired him, didn't he? Uh, no, Van Damme quit. I'm pretty sure he quit. Because he, 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 he couldn't. On that he, set, though, wasn't he? Well, it, it was the fact he that he was hired to do all the spinning kicks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then when they put him in that first suit, he couldn't, do it. He couldn't even move. Yeah, yeah. That suit so was dreadful. It was yeah. dreadful. I mean, that the suit got redesigned afterwards. Mate, you, you can't imagine the difference. If you've never seen it, Google the original Predator suit. Oh, it's awful. You'll be like, how did you go from this to this? Yeah, like, it's, Stan it's who, who did the original? Yeah. And like, looked at that and went, oh, you are it's like you are a, like way yeah. better than me it, at your job. It's like a monster from the 40s. Stan Winston looked at him and went, you know what? Mandible. Balls. And oh. from there, oh no, my god! Didn't he redesign it on a plane flight? Over? On a plane flight over, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just went, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. That should be such a Christmas movie. Yeah. Next question, I'm I know, I got, I, uh, yeah, no, that was that was all, that was all of mine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next question is from Nick Luisi. What up, Nick? Nick is listing off some of his favorite Christmas movies. Yes, yes mate. Brother. Die Hard. Yeah. Die Hard 2. Yes. The Long Kiss Goodnight. Yes. The Ref. Yes. Home Alone yes. 1 and 2. That's yep. his Christmas lineup. And but he also listed Jaws the Revenge. If yes. It's been a pretty rough holiday I love season. Jaws the Revenge, yeah. <laughs> so here's my question. What are your some of your favourite roles by actors who are clearly having copious amounts of fun in the roles they are playing <laughs> they do not have to be good films or Great even question. good performances they can be hammy and campy as ever but you can just tell the actor is having a right blast in their role if yeah. you come to mind for me would be jeffrey rush as barboza in pirates of the caribbean peter mcnichol in Re as renfield in dracula dead and loving it <laughs> or uh, uh joan cusack as debbie in Adam's Family Values. Cheers to you, Brohams. Much love, peace and happiness to yours. Yes, um, man. In the Cheers, Nick. Season. What up, Nick? All right, I got the ultimate. Okay. I've got the winner on this one. Really? No one has ever had more fun than Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder. You know what? My first answer yes. 100%. Yeah. And you Thunder. didn't even scroll down, my fucker, because absolutely. You didn't even read that. You, can't, you, can't, you cannot <laughs> fucking fathom how much fun he was having doing that. The only other one that I can really, really get behind that in my memory is, is Robert Englund as Freddy Krueger as the film series goes goes on there's very seldom a uh, uh an actor that keeps reprising their role in a horror franchise that when he's on the power of like it. I'll get paid <laughs> <laughs> he loved playing that part throughout that that run uh, but I've also listed Hot Fuzz yeah uh, you know because they were they clearly knew what they were doing with that film I think it's the best of the Cornetto trilogy you know what? same trilogy but uh, Pierce Brosnan in World's End I, yes. I watched all the extras. I got all three of those on Blu-ray and I watched all the extras because I love those movies. Oh, and you're sure. absolutely right with Hot Fuzz. Yeah. But yet, um, the fact that um, he didn't need to be there for the scene where he does go all robot and he's like, you know, his eyes like, oh, spoilers, yeah. they're robots. Yeah. Um, and um, he he was literally like, he said to Edgar, no, 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 I'll hang out. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. And while they're shooting the actors re re reacting to him doing that, mm. yeah. the motherfuckers behind the camera doing the stance and walking around. And you're like, that's cool. Wow, dude. I mean, that's like basically coming into work when you don't have, have to. to. Because he enjoys because being Because he's like, no, 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 no. It'll be so much better if they can see me do it. You yeah. Know what I, mean? yeah. I love yeah. stuff like that. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Meridian Soldiers typed in the chat. Brad Duroff, of course, him playing Chucky. Oh, absolutely yeah. loves that loves the role it's it's part of him Rick now. winning Robin Hood's See, a good one as for well. some reason when he was talking about favourite roles by actors who were clearing how, clearly having copious amounts of fun I immediately just thought of DiCaprio in Django Unchained you know how he smashes his hand on the table and just keeps on acting. And just keeps yeah. on going. <laughs> I don't know if he's I having don't, I don't fun. Well, like, no, I don't know. Definitely he, he struggled, didn't role. he? Because there was there's that story about how he struggled to say the N-word. Yeah. When he's got like Samuel Jackson but, but, and Jamie Foxx in front of him. And Samuel Jackson was said, like, just get on it, man. It's a Tuesday. Just do it. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> you know, taking the amount of... He's just having so much fun with their role. Like I said, Django Unchained, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know, DiCaprio just... I rewatched that the other day. You know, Wolf of Wall Street, DiCaprio yeah. just going off on one, just doing whatever he needs to do. You know, I, I jumping from there, like I said, to then looking at Brad Pitt, same thing. Once upon a time in Hollywood, 
you know, fucking... What's the, the train, bullet train? Bullet train. He was having fun Ocean, in that, I think. Ocean's yes. Eleven, like him and George Clooney, just... them. They, we don't see it so much in 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 past movies because they because they, you get that one take mm-hmm. and we don't see so much behind the scenes anymore. So we, when when we do and we see them having fun, fun, yeah, like oh fucking Patrick McNeil in fucking Dracula Dead and Loving It, just bouncing around. Yeah, fucking. Yeah. Do you know what actually? Um, fucking Daniel Craig. As much, I know it's a, it, it's a bit of a topic where people are funny about the movies, but Daniel Craig in those like Knives Out when he does that. Oh like, yeah, I've seen them because yeah. no. But the, the funny thing is like when you watch Bond. Mm. You could tell where he's just like fucking end it. I'm just doing this for a paycheck. Yeah. I'm just contracted. I'm to contracted do it. to do but it. But you know, he genuinely, whether you like those movies or not, mm. when he's playing that, you know, character, that southern draw character, you know, the investigator, he does come off like he's having fun in that movie, yeah. which is great. Yeah, um, Ronan's just wrote Nick Cage and Face Off, and I'm like uh, Nick Cage and everything. Nick everything. Cage and he always everything. seems to be Dude, having fun. Think as well that like uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Oppenheimer. Yeah, where he's like, he he's always like that. I yeah. love to fucking uh, I get to acting act again. again. Yeah. I yeah. I'm purposely buying Oppenheimer for my for my own Christmas present. Nice. And I am going to set four hours aside over the holidays. I mean, you're gonna have to. And I'm gonna just gonna sit down and watching Oppenheimer in my chair all the way through, taking breaks, couple of beers. I'm gonna absorb that movie like no ever. I sat through fucking Barbie through this year I'm gonna <laughs> fucking end it with Oppenheimer and if it's not as good you wait a fucking January fucking you're podcast you're asking me if Barbie well it's like Oppenheimer not as good as Barbie like, I'm telling you <laughs> if I get to the end of like, Oppenheimer you'll be pleasantly surprised <laughs> if I get to the end of Oppenheimer and and it's bad we're talking about it in the next podcast. It's it's a great movie I mean, whether it's bad uh, is down your talk. Uh, it's I think, we'll be, I think we'll be talking about it in our top it's yeah. it's like, I, it's I, good. yeah. I might watch Tenet right after <laughs> We got a question from Josh Del Monte. What up, Josh? Christmas themed questions, okay. What was your first memory of the Christmas period? Oh, best Christmas oh. present. Um, I wouldn't be sure what would be the best Christmas movie of all time, but <clears throat> my last question is which one is it? Uh yeah, I'm looking at guys this I mean Scrooge is Scrooge, fucking... Muppet Christmas Carol, Gremlins, Krampus. Those are my top, top picks. I'd say die hard, die hard, but ticking all three boxes, Scrooged. Scrooge you know for me what? is for Honestly, me number one. I'm going to say Scrooge. Scrooge, yeah, Scrooge. I've said it multiple times on the podcast that Christmas Eve, I watch Scrooge and then I watch Die Hard. Yeah. Scrooge for me is just 100% the most, one of the most beautiful movies mm. that I've ever seen anyway. Um, it's like the most incredible retelling of that classic story because obviously it is <clears throat> Dickens. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the performances. The Dickens. Cr- we don't want to scare the Dickens out of them. <laughs> Nobody gets me. It's, um, yeah, it, it's just bell to bell. It doesn't miss yeah. for whatever its runtime is. Yeah. So I will I will always say fucking Scrooge. Cause, I mean, all hail fucking Bill Murray. Bill yeah. Murray. Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. 100%. Uh, uh, best Christmas present. Best Christmas present. Oh, do you know what? It's a really stupid one, but I'll throw, I'll throw, this is one of them. Nice. Yeah, you're this. drinking from it. Fucking master, my fucking my wife bought really, this Mastodon mug like fucking years ago. I've had some years really ago, and I love this good one. Christmas presents. I, I'll That's always, I we will always remember though when it's like first memory of the Christmas period. Best Christmas present is like uh, I do remember uh, the year that I wanted the PlayStation One. Uh, like the way I grew up, it was like mm. <laughs> if if PlayStation One, whatever year it came out, if we argue, it was like ninety. 95 something like that yeah if it came out in 94 for argument's sake i was like uh, i'm not gonna get this till 95 like when the prices come down a little bit do you yeah know what I mean? yeah so that year for christmas when i was like dad all, all i want is playstation one and i wanted mm. tomb raider and i wanted disc world with it Ooh. yeah and uh i remember opening all my presents and having a great time and i hadn't opened a playstation one but i totally yeah. do you know what i'd had such a good Christmas, like my presents were so great, you know, that I, I didn't even think about it. Mm. And my mum, this is how working class he was. My mum had to go to work on Christmas morning. Mm. You know, she had to go, she cleaned a, a local pub and she had to go fucking um, clean it. And he was like, Right, your, your mum's going to go um, work now. Can you grab her coat? It's on the kitchen table. And I was like, Yeah. I walked in, I fucking pulled it. As soon as I moved the coat, there was a fucking PlayStation 1 under it. Damn. I nearly, if there wasn't a PlayStation 1 there, I'd have flipped that fucking table. <laughs> I was so happy. But it's, like, it's more the fact that it's like everything else that I'd got, I'd had such a nice morning that I'd totally forgotten I'd asked for a PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 
Um, they didn't see me for two years. Right. <laughs> I was just in my room, just like on my PlayStation. <laughs> uh, growing up, my Christmases were always split because my mum um, and dad were divorced by the time I was two years old. Mm. So Christmases were always split uh, partially at, at mum's, partially at dad's, then partially at extended families. Um, I don't really remember like the earliest Christmas kind of. So I don't really remember them too well. Um, what I mostly remember is Christmas Eve. Just me and my brother would tend to watch, uh, just watch uh, movies on television as we fell asleep, and uh, you know, trying to stay up, mm, waiting to try and catch Santa Claus. Catch Santa Claus, um, yeah. As uh, our mum would usually come in and drop a sack of presents at the ends of our beds. They weren't under the tree; they were put at the ends of our beds. So, kind of always remember waking up to a sack of presents at the end of the bed was a sweet uh, childhood memory of mine. Um, and I think my, uh, go, like going back, I think when, as a child, my favorite Christmas present was probably uh, my, my Game Boy uh, uh, with a copy of oh. Tetris. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I played Jeez. that game of Tetris on that Game Boy for years and years and years. Uh, absolutely uh, tremendous present. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Uh, man, my Christmases recently, like, I've, I've got some really good fucking shit. I mean, Andy complains at me every fucking year that I, I organise my birthdays, but that's because Christmas is just around the corner. So I've got to organise exactly <laughs> what the fuck I'm getting for my birthday, just so I know what I'm going for just Christmas. Just to be clear, I don't, I don't complain you, do, you, do, you because you complain you every fucking year. Wait, 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 every wait, wait, fucking wait, wait, year, wait, wait. and it takes years I, I to master I don't, this I don't shit, complain dude. about the way you organise it. It's how fucking Eric Cartman about it you are. And it's I like, you need to get me this. I work very hard. You do. I work very fucking hard. So like you know. I worked out by the way that cuz I remember on my birthday this year yeah, yeah. when you sent me my presents yeah, okay yeah. one of which I'm wearing one of this which shirt, he's wearing right now you so know so I was sat on my deck in with two of my mates we were having a barbecue since I was born in September yeah we were having a barbecue fucking doorbell rings and it's a delivery and I opened it and it was two t-shirts from wwe.com mhm mm and I was like holy shit I was like, this is fucking awesome. I was like, this motherfucker spent money, man. He really bought me some really nice stuff. Wait. Like... And then I was like, dude, that's awesome. And you were like, get me AEW for the fucking Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Hell like, yeah. Now I know why you spent 40 quid. You were like, because <laughs> I couldn't, you were like, I couldn't that, say can no. I, can, you have access, can, I, can I access your wish list? I'm like, no. Nah. I was like, I've said son it of to, a bitch. I've said it to private. You were like, why? I'm like, because I kind it's of specifically trade, right? want some shit. So this is what I want. But like when I was playing what? like a fucking fiddle, I'm, wearing, I was like, I'm talking to him, he's asking for, I'm wearing a shirt, I can't say no. <laughs> When I was growing up, you know, it was it was <laughs> real kicking the teeth. Uh, I, I gotta say, uh, when I was growing up, because we'd always get the catalogues, we'd always get the catalogues. Oh, the laminated book and of you'd dreams. Sit there from and you'd get your pen and you'd circle shit and you'd make your list. And every year I'd make my list, and every year Santa wouldn't get me anything. <laughs> Would not He's get the me anything. Boy that Santa <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! My my mum worked really hard, um, and what she did get me was really awesome. And so as I've gotten older, I've actually gone back and I've bought the stuff that she would have got me for Christmas. And then I've ended up selling when I was younger. Right. And okay. I got like, she bought me this fucking um, Star Wars micro machines, uh, not Star Wars, Star Trek micro machine set. Oh, okay. Right. So when she bought it for me when I was like 13, I took it out of the box. I played for them all, put them on the stand. I lent them to friends, never saw them again. Ended up giving them away because you turn 16, 17, you turn into a fucking adult. You don't need micro machines anymore. Yeah. I turn into a 35 year old man. I'm like, uh, I want those micro oh, machines back. back yeah. 80 quid. Suddenly feel like collecting Damn. Lego again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 80 yeah. quid for this micro machine set. But you know what? I worked hard. I bought that micro machine set. So when it comes around to, to, to original kind of, I, uh, Christmas presents, maybe the first originals that I remember, I think might have been my castle gray skull. Nice, yeah, yeah. I got a castle. I know you meant this has been your answer. So I know it's true because this is the same answer you've given to yeah. a similar question before. So. Well, the, the, but the thing, the <clears throat> thing was getting that. Like, I looked it up online a couple, a couple of months ago. I contemplated like how much a whole He-Man set would cost. Yeah, mm. I, I, I can't. Yeah. Can't go in there. Yeah. I, honestly, don't look. Don't even look, guys. Yeah. Don't even look. You know. Uh, fucking... I don't know who just mentioned it in the chat, but you remember Argos. And Woolworths or other catalogs, oh, yes. they would be like you would be the given the catalog. Nuts. You'd be like, yes, circle man. what you want, what you what you want for man, Christmas. I remember doing that for Jessica. She handed me the fucking thing back with one thing circled. I was like, Is that what you want? She went, no, no, that's what I don't want. 
<laughs> Smith's, oh, okay. Smith, Smith's dropped their catalog for our door like really? a month ago. So it's still a thing. It's still a thing. Because wow. I signed That's up for it. I looked through, like, <laughs> the crazy thing is to see computer games in there. You know, you see this section that they're saying, look, buy these computer games. And you know you can get it cheaper on Steam or digital uh, or mm -hmm. through the Xbox, Microsoft store. But Smith's are still selling their stuff. Transformers are still a big fucking thing. Turtles are still a big fucking oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, toy lines. Dude, yeah, the toy lines you know, like there. a couple of years back, I, when I bought the PS4, I mm. bought the VR as like a surprise at Christmas, like really surprised Jessica. She still plays it to this day. She loves it. Donna yeah. bought me a Rick and Morty game yeah. for the VR. The kid plays it all the time. She probably shouldn't, but she plays it all the time. She's like, Dad, have you seen the PSVR 2? Now you've got the PS5. I was like, yes. And she's like, are you going to get that at Christmas? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so, Why not? I was like, because it is more than the PS5, darling. Yeah. Just, there's about, Damn. Well, there's like <clears throat> six games out on it. I'm not, no. no I'm not doing Maybe that. Next and then she keeps going like, Maybe next oh, Christmas. is this, is this one of those where, uh, where are you going to surprise us with it? And I'm like, I'd prepare for failure <laughs> now, kid. No, you ain't fucking getting that. Damn. He's bored. Yeah. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I haven't. Next question. <laughs> Next question is from Natalie Holbert. Well, oh, Natalie. Merry Christmas, Natalie, you angel. Happy pre-Christmas, my kittens. Hope <laughs> you have all been good. My question is, if your squirrel assassin has gone yeah. into hibernation, yeah. what aspect of Christmas dinner do you fashion into a weapon to vanquish your enemies? I'm thinking some kind of sprout catapult. Uh, sprout a pult, if you will. Sprout a pult. Left yeah. hard, the sprouts will pack a hefty punch. Overcooked, and you have a marvelous slip hazard flinging unwanted in laws left and right. Over to you, gents. Okay, well, first of all, nothing in my house is overcooked. I'm just going to tell you that now. How Sharp dare you? And parsnips. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I'm literally, I'm thinking sort of like turkey legs are going to get absolutely just yeah, prison they're shivved. Always, they're always the you know? last to go, aren't they? <laughs> no, again, not in my house, no. The one legs oh, I love the, the dark meat. Yeah, so I, 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 I always, <laughs> I always want to go for the legs, but they're always so fatty. I'd rather just go for the white meat. I'd, I've never even considered the possibility of turning food into a weapon. What? Not even a pigs in blanket. You've got to think like of, Batman, dude. Uh, right now, I'm like, like how like the hell? Like, knuckle, knuckle, I just want to eat it. I don't want to stab anyone with it. I just want to eat it. Yeah. But then, if they are like overcooked, then yeah, okay, yeah, it's probably going to be deadly anyway. I'm, I'm or undercooked. You, I'm, I'm sharpening like wings into, <laughs> fucking, into fucking batarangs. I'm so looking forward to Christmas dinner this year. Fucking, I love Christmas dinner. Oh, I love. Oh, absolutely, I love Christmas dinner. Mm. I love cooking it. I love the whole fucking ritual of it. I got it down to like a military art now. I've been doing it for so long. Nice. It's like Don, Donna and Jessica go out for a walk with her mum and stuff. Like they go up and meet because you know we all live pretty local. And I do a nice big walk, take the dog with them and everything. Like that. So I just get the house to myself. Mm. It's normally me and the cat. Yeah. And I'll be like, I'll have my tablet on in the kitchen. I'll be doing food. I'll just be flicking food at the cat. And he's just sat there all fat. And like, <laughs> and I have stuff on the tablet. I'll already have a drink on the go. It's like 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, life's pretty fucking amazing. I'm not going to lie. But I'm, okay, I'm, I'm absolutely going with, um, I'm thinking some kind of uh, like pickle rick style weapon system used out of like bones of turkeys and stuff. I'm going to say the like, turkey bones is probably I'm the turkey most sturdy. Bone rick. No, turkey bone rick. <laughs> <laughs> Like maybe you could do something with a gravy. I don't know. Yeah, drink it. Right. <laughs> and then spit it in the face like fucking Tajiri. And now I'm thinking the, the poison I'm, mist. I'm thinking totally brass knuckle pigs in blanket fucking gloves. You know, the pigs in blanket. <laughs> I'd never there. waste food like that. No, I no, wanna eat it. Yeah, to fight me. I'd rather Can die. I'd should... rather die. <laughs> you yeah, you punch them in the face and they don't know if they should bite your knuckle or if they should take the punch because either way it's gonna hurt. And then the juices are all in their face, and they're like, oh, I love sausage juice, and you're just licking your knuckles. See, in chat, we've got Christmas, <laughs> Christmas dinner in Portugal is freaking boiled cod. I fucking hate Christmas oh, dinner. Oh, man. Dude, that's well, horrible. I, I could totally eat boiled cod. But I mean, not, not Christmas, Christmas dinner, dinner dude. No, honestly, bro, I've eaten <laughs> fucking turkey like for 41 years of my life. You change it for yeah, fish, I don't great. give a fuck. Turkey's I'm six great. beers in by that point. I'm forward eating 12 minutes. Oh, I don't believe for a minute. I don't believe for a minute you can drink six of those. No, no. no. <laughs> like, Not anymore. You were six beers in. The reason everyone's eating cod is you're passed out on top of the Christmas dinner. And Dylan's like, there's fish in the freezer. Yeah. 
No, I, I do like your idea of sharpened parsnips because when they've been in the oven, honey roasted ones, oh, yeah. they can get quite, quite, oh, so good. quite yeah. nasty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, carrots are pretty good at stabbing weapons. Yeah. Not yeah, that pretty good eye but... gouger, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. All the veg is just yeah. amazing at Christmas. I love it. Mm. You know, it's funny. We had uh, a friend of ours was going to join us. Fucking, you know, sandbags were going to come over yeah. for Christmas dinner. And he said to me, like, he's a big dude. My friend's a big dude. He like, said to me, he's like, mate, if I'm coming over for Christmas dinner, He's like, do you, want, do you want any money or anything towards me? Which is very sweet of him and stuff. But I was like, nah, it's fine. I said, dude, I don't change anything about what I make on Christmas Day when you come over. He's like, really? I said, yeah, all you do is affect the leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's not coming over this year because he's off to see his girls and stuff. I'm sort of like, oh my God, I'm going to meet turkey. So he's like, nine days. <laughs> okay, nice. quick question before we go to the next question. Which, and this is for chat as well and anybody out there. If you could only pick one, and I know people are going to say I don't eat either of them, but... Broccoli or cauliflower? Broccoli. I'm going to say broccoli because of like weightlifted and stuff. But okay, listen. If it's on the... Cauliflower cheese on, is pretty funny. Right, okay, though. listen. This is what I was about to say. <laughs> if it's on the table at Christmas, mm. it's Both. covered in a fuckload of cheese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, like, it's absolutely drowning they, in they, fucking cheese. They're pretty cheese. much the same <laughs> fucking vegetable, but one's green, one's white. To a white, point, but one has a higher protein content, so yeah, I'm going to yeah, naturally yeah. go to yeah. that. I like broccoli and cauliflower. They're both fucking badass. Next question. All right. Next question is from Dan Bruce. What Club up, Dan? Dan? A Scrooge-themed question. Love it. You are visited by three movie characters, <sighs> one from the 80s, 90s, one from the 2000s to present, and one from a film you would like to see made in the future. Who are they? What a great fucking question. My answer is Dr. Emmett Brown oh, is nice. my ghost of Christmas past. Yeah. John Wick is my ghost of Christmas present. And the gunslinger from the Dark Tower unmade film is my ghost of Christmas future. I was absolutely going to say John Wick for <laughs> present. <laughs> <laughs> uh, past, I was going to say Ash from Evil Dead. Nice. Oh, nice, nice. John Wick. I, I'm going to just steal and go. Yeah, like John, John Wick, Wick he's the present, right? Uh, I am just going to say um, uh, Jeffrey D. Morgan from the unmade Batman Flashpoint movie. Oh, that'd be sweet. <laughs> Uh, free, so great fucking question. they're free ghosts visiting me, right? Yeah. Um. So I will go with Sigourney Weaver from eighties and nineties. Which character? Um, Ripley. You, mate, you got the fucking. You've just you've just cracked the code. What? I'm I changing my. No, no, I'm changing my fucking. Wait, you can't change your, I'm gonna Yeah, no, no, no. Yet. I'm saying you've done it right. Well, okay. He's picked like females to come visit me in my bed. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think of that. No, I'm laying in bed and John Wick. We're gonna put you yeah. dudes. So, 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 so part of me. We picked sausage fest, and he's like, he's he's winning. I was going Ripley from Aliens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was sure. thinking, Furiosa I was, from present day. Absolutely. I was, I was well, Anna Taylor Joy from this period. <laughs> Anna Taylor Joy from this period. Shit, man, why you fucking. I was going to go fucking Linda Hamilton from 992 Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe fucking um, uh, Denise Richards from either Starship Troopers or fucking The World Is Not Enough. You know, like like you said, Anna Taylor Joy from 2000 to present. Fucking Jessica Biel, Jessica Alba. Fucking well, the Christmas I, party. Sorry, I. George <laughs> really funny. Mate, he's asked a question, and you've just basically told him a wank. <laughs> <laughs> mate, you mate, just run through your greatest hits. I, I honestly like, started off. I honestly really started on honorably with Sigourney we- Weaver from Alien. You did use the other And then nice before I could even get past Weaver, you just went. He's going to list all girls, and so my mind just went, all girls. Why not? <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> well, shit, I'm going to be on to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> next question. Next from question. Phil Phil Homer. Homer. What, what up, Phil? Phil? What up, man? Which major horror franchise, Halloween, Friday the 13th, etc., would you have liked to have produced a legitimate Christmas instalment? I personally oh, would have loved a, a Christmas Friday the 13th, a Christmas party on Crystal Lake that takes a familiar turn. Critters are Thanksgiving special. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you, you, take, you take the pan off that's supposed to be the turkey and they just roll out. They're, in just, that ball, they're like, just fucking yeah. eating everything, so they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And because of Thanksgiving and yeah. it's Black Friday, they're just fucking throwing fucking money and food at these fucking critters. Yep. Stuff and, the crates. And then next year you get Gremlins Christmas special. So the year after that you get Critters Cross Gremlins special. Chris- Gremlins versus Kreitz. 
Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm definitely going for fucking Nightmare on Elm Street, a Christmas special. Oh, my yeah. God. That would be great. Uh, give me Evil Dead, then. Give me Evil Dead at Christmas. It's a Nightmare on Elm Street Evil. before Christmas. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Christ, it's so, yes. oh, it's so easy, isn't it? <laughs> right. The, evil the chat thing. even beat me to straight away. It was right there, wasn't it? <laughs> no, no, the Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. before Christmas. It was right there. <laughs> Had it in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Great. Alrighty, uh, next question is from Villa Boys123. What so up, Villa Boys? Boys? After Andy's comments on Hellblade, I am inspired mm. to get back into gaming. I have an Xbox Series X. So my question is, what are some, to me, unknown gems? Uh, I've already prepared some answers yeah, for this for question. Um, I'm not. I'm like. I've not had an Xbox since it was just Xbox. Um, yeah, I, I had my Xbox original, then Xbox 360, then Xbox. So all of the X's and S's and Z's and iterations. I, I don't. Well, no, but you're on Game Pass Ultimate, know them. right? I'm on, I've got Game Pass on PC. Right, right, right. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it's basically the same fucking. So thing. I just listed some games very quickly that I remember from oh. my Xbox time that I think should be looked at more. Lost uh, Odyssey. Is so Lost good. Odyssey. Mm. It, it, it's a game that so almost disappeared. Good. Like mm. couldn't get it anywhere. Uh, so I'm glad that Microsoft kind of brought it back uh, to Xbox because. Uh, the the Xbox console was criticized quite heavily at one point for having very few Japanese RPG games. And Lost Odyssey was that game. For me, yeah, it was understand. from the creators of uh, of some of the Final Fantasy games that kind of left Square or Square Enix or whatever it was. And Lost Odyssey, that from the music, the characters, the writing, the story, the gameplay, is an absolute uh, a must, must play. Mm. Uh, and I feel like that one has fallen from like the limelight and so I, I think it might be a hidden gem now uh but my other nominations are scorn which is a more modern horror game uh prey from 2006 that's a great game titanfall 2 which that's i think a most fucking people, great game uh, most people d- d- like just oh, didn't even bother with it give uh, me that it's a real, i think it's a real new shame. one oh yeah. yeah uh and then of course plague tale innocence and requiem which have become like uh, uh, absolutely adore uh, uh, Amicia and Hugo. Mm. Uh, I was looking again because I, I missed out on buying the special edition of the second game, and I really want the statue of Amicia and Hugo. And it's going on eBay for nine hundred pound. Fuck you know how badly do you want it? <laughs> exactly. I was like, man, when it came out, it was a hundred quid. Now it's fucking ten times yeah, the man. price. Yeah, like, I've got to. I already started looking on Etsy for people that were doing recreations of it. And yeah. They're going for over a yeah, hundred quid. Sure. I was like, man, I missed out on that one. That's one of those that I want. But yeah, that's um, for me. I'll throw on top of that sort of like, especially if you're looking at sort of more of the indie titles and stuff. Since we were talking about Hellblade, is uh, Ori and the Blind Forest and the mm, sequel to Ori, yeah, yeah. Was, they're both <laughs> fucking beautiful games. They're <coughs> amazing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, what's the one I played this year? Sea of Stars, mm, the, yeah. the sort of JRPG style, yeah, Chrono Trigger style game. Chrono Trigger style one. That's a that's a fucking great one. Absolutely, yeah. Anyway, um, any man. I, funny enough, he's been talking about this because um, I I cancelled my Game Pass a couple of days ago. Oh, you I, not playing anything on there? For I now, have or? not played my Xbox since about four months ago when I played my last game of Evil Dead. I played Fair, one yeah. last game of Evil Dead online because I was just like, I'm not playing anything else. Everything at the moment I'm playing on the Switch. That's all my time at the moment is on the Switch between GoldenEye and fucking... Tetris and fucking the game uh, Wild, uh, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and I know all these games are available on Xbox but the portability of the Switch is what I have I, I get up I go I move around with it I play it I pause it I put it down I do something I pick it back up I unpause it yeah. so uh, gaming wise personally if there's a new game coming out that you really want to play then get ready to play that um, if if it's available on the PC, I'd say go for the PC version of it because that's the best style of that game you'll play. Yeah, yeah. If it's retro that you're wanting to go, man, I recently saw on the Switch for 11 quid, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol oh, wow. on the Switch <laughs> wow. with save states. Okay. Yeah. Save so states actually, for 11 quid. To I be was fair, like, save states might not help you out of Zombies Ain't My Neighbors because if you save state, you sometimes need to go back some levels because 
Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But, God. dude, dude, Good recently, because I, I, I got Lion King and Jungle, uh, Lion King and Aladdin for my birthday on the Switch as well. Having a rewind That's a function, banger, isn't it? That's having a, a rewind function on Lion King, <laughs> man. It's funny because I said that with Jessica about like that whole rewind thing on like Lion King, especially where I'm like, you don't know shit. You don't know we didn't shit. have that. I this think was one it. of the most Man. difficult games ever fucking honestly, made. Honestly, honestly, I've got a save on there where I am two levels away from the end of the game. Yeah. Because I I I made my way through. I rewound where I died. I passed everything. I save, 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 save. I did the fucking uh, stampede first time. Because well I had like well fucking, done. mate, I had like nine lives. Oh, oh right, oh, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> say, so when you say like, first time, you have a different Oh yeah, I died like right. two or three, but I fucking right. had enough okay. lives to survive. <laughs> Retro style, if there's games you remember playing, hit up the Switch and fucking find them out or find an emulator. If there's new games you want to play, like Game Pass is, is a great idea, uh, but there's so many. Yeah. They yeah. just dropped the new Dead Space on there. Nice, yeah, which there's, I highly recommend. You you never ever go, Yeah, you well, <laughs> totally, but you'll never ever play the original Dead Space. Play the For remake. Me, it replaced it's it. on Game it Pass. It actually replaced the original. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, I'm going to do something I've never done on this podcast. On any, on all previous 60 podcasts. Oh, uh, what I the really fuck? Need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. I, oh, 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 do you know, I thought you were go. about to agree with Ian. No, no, no. I really need to go to the oh, bathroom. Okay. I never excuse myself. But I will read this question out before I vacate and leave Ian to answer it temporarily. 60 fucking podcasts. He's gone for a whiz. I know. It's because I don't usually up. drink this much. Too, as well, so I like <laughs> Well, we'll, glad, we'll just make I'm a whole piston thing. There's a whole we're going to take turns. Right, let's, yeah, let's, we're going to tag it out. Let's go with the question. What is the question? And I'll um, take it while you guys go. Cause Dennis Fedotov, 3414. What up, Dennis? Love up, your Dennis? working channel. Is there a movie that you'd like to re-review? To add some more facts to the review or to give a different point of view? Maybe it's changed in time. I've, I've got my answers there. You but I'm do your answer after you come I, back. I will do. So, I will do. You, Sorry, so you go. I mean, if you need to go and you go and I'll do my answer. Well, this is more for you two anyway. So yeah, I'll okay, right. Too. So I'll, I really just want to I'll, I'll do my answer while the guy so oh, it's just it's just me at the moment. Um, to review, uh, review yeah, actually, well, well, um, I'd oh, really God. like to go back and do Leon. We did a Leon review many, many years ago and... I didn't edit it. Gary didn't edit it. We had a friend of ours who edited it at the time. And he didn't actually... He didn't know our our style. He tried to do his own style. And he didn't have the time to put into the review as he wanted to. So he rushed it. And he... Um, <laughs> That's okay, Neurovisor. You go. I'm no, sorry. I'm all alone. Um, so he rushed the review. Um, and I felt quite bad because I love Leon. And we made some really good points in that review, and yet he edited out a lot of the points that we made. So I'd love to go back and review that one. Um, there's so many, because I keep watching new shit, and it makes old shit look better than what it was. So it's difficult. Um, recent film made it fucking Halloween look good. Hey, Gary's back, look! Hey. Oh, shit. Oh, he's, he's tripping. He's Ooh. tripping. Oh, I see, well, okay, so well, well, well you go. Like, <coughs> I mean, this is hot, like a whole thing. Well, it's just, yeah, it's so very unprofessional of everyone oh, <laughs> in the middle of the live recording of the podcast. This is, can only this is, can only be excused at Christmas time after we've all been drinking for three plus hours. I do have to say though, um, a, a Dennis Fedotov three four one four. Um, it's a great question. We have been asked this one a fair few times. And the first one that always comes to mind is The Fog. John Carpenter's The Fog. When Ian and I reviewed that one, I think it was still fairly early days into the channel. And I didn't really give it a very positive review in my memory. And since revisiting the film in the cinema, and getting the surround sound 4K picture... It, it, for me, it was a whole different film altogether. And so totally re-fell in love with The Fog. And uh, and so I, I feel like my opinions on that film have changed quite a bit. The other film that I would like to re-review with Ian would be Predator. The original Predator movie. Uh, we made that one in the first year of the channel. And so the, the, the video review is, I think, about 20 minutes long. Whereas by now, 
our video reviews are anywhere between 30 and 60 plus minutes. I think there's so much that we didn't cover in the original Predator film that I think it's a, a huge contender for a video for us to uh, to come back to uh, at some point. Uh, yeah, so there's probably a couple of others. Um, you know, I always regret that we never brought up Freddy Krueger's glove in the Evil Dead movies. It's just like, how did we for keep forgetting yeah, to mention that? that? Yeah. You know, so that's just like one... You know, tidbit or factoid that I'd like to. Just we missed so many just, points. Just so you know, sorry, he just passed me in the toilet. I was like, wait, who's doing the podcast? Yeah, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got, I was like, wait, we're all three of us <laughs> not we there. All just left. Like, the first <laughs> time in in sixty fucking podcasts, we all just went. Break, hey, dude, listen. I gave us an excuse that we've all been drinking Merry, for Merry four Christmas. hours. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're getting old. Uh, You're going to sit here on YouTube and fucking watch us just get old, guys. Like, got to yeah. This, like... You get old and you live again. I mean, we've already got a decade of, uh, from, from from where we were a decade ago. I mean, you were in the first, the first year of Runs Andy with the Black Hole Review. You did not so you like that film. you could literally see us no, a 10 year. It was so Such good. Sucks, did you yeah, even right. think when we did the Black Hole that Disney would then take the reins of Marvel movies and go... Not after that piece of shit. <laughs> fucking yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, you're right. um, uh, is that all the questions? Have we got no, all we, the questions? No, that, that we're now over that, onto yes. the Twitch questions. Twitch questions. Good all word. righty, so the first question is from Richie Scarface. What up, Richie well, Scarface? Richie. Merry early Christmas, guys. Fuck yeah. Hope you have a great one. When we were younger, there were many films where a family would get a puppy or a kitten for Christmas. My question is, what horror critter creature would you like to find under the tree as a present? But you have to take into account how to keep it alive. Example, food, drink, housing, and how to stop it from killing everyone. Okay, well, ironically, I did it, it, it came up in my Facebook memories okay. this year. Uh, for the last, it was 10 years ago this year that we got our kitten for Jessica for Christmas. Who ironically is called, who's called, I'm shit faced. <laughs> who's called Gizmo. Gizmo. Nice. Um, so I'm just going to say, I want a Mogwai and I'm throwing that motherfucker in the bathtub boxing day. Because <laughs> I'm an anarchist. I'm yeah. just, I just want to see what's going to go down. You, know, you it's, give me it's, that Mogwai, I'm oh, like, no. you're having a shower, it's mate. It's funny you said that and <laughs> went quite dark because... All of a sudden, I was thinking of the creature from Wrath of Khan that he uses to we put puts behind in the ears. Ooh, takes <laughs> control of them. Oh, my God. I get one of them for Christmas. I'm taking over the world. Oh. Gary? Chud. <laughs> <A> chud. <laughs> chud. <laughs> Fucking chuds. I'm Fuzz. trying to think. Like, you know what? Give, give me a subspecies minion. I don't know. <laughs> what? From the broken <laughs> fingers? The, I'm, the just, little, I'm struggling to think. So he can throw a net on people. What, a minions is a despicable or creature. No, they're fucking these Because a mogwai would be guys. the obvious choice. Like, who doesn't want a mogwai? But I ain't chucking it in the bathtub, you monster. Man, I'll Peter Griffin that shit. Where it's like, here's a mogwai. I will be so <laughs> responsible with this. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. I mean, a crite would be pretty cool. It can Spice literally eat through there. anything. <laughs> I mean, the crite you know, would true. eat your bloody gremlins. Do you know what would be good to take for a walk? Would be the... Um, in labyrinths, you know the things they have on top of the, on the sticks that bite people. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just take one yeah. of them for a walk around the area. I mean, I always, I always enjoy my fucking uh, white privilege where people cross the road because I'm walking a German Shepherd that weighs like fifty <laughs> kilos. People shit themselves across the road. I'm like, I enjoy mate, walking. It's not that. It's, it's if you got one of them, it's because you draw that swastika on the center of your forehead. There is that. There is that. What's the little? It's it's more the goose step that freaks what's people out. The, like, the creature yeah. from Star Wars. I mean, I guess it's not from a horror because he wants the question is from horror. But what's the the little thing that sits in Jabba's uh, palace? And laughs. Salacious crumb. Uh, salacious yes. Crumb, yes. Crumb, Give me one yeah. of those. I'll stick that in the background <laughs> of the film reviews. We need one of those during the film reviews, Ian. Ewok. Yeah, good <laughs> yeah. shout. Yeah, fucking uh, a drop bear. It's pretty horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers for the question, Richie. Great question. Next question is from Craig's house. What, what up, Craig? Craig? What would each of you class as your three best all-time Christmas movies? Also, we'd just like to say, keep on doing what you guys Ooh. are doing. Podcasts and movie reviews are awesome. Thank you so much, Craig. 
Um, I think we've already answered uh, it. We've all yeah, got Scrooge. Scrooge number Scrooge. one. Scrooge is number one. Gremlins for me, for me number two. And then Krampus one, number three. Yeah, the third oh, one can dude, mix and really match. I keep Krampus out of my top three because Krampus is Krampus so, is so good. good. Leaf of Weapon is so good. Dara 2 is so good. Elf is so good. Miracle on Fire 4 Street is so good. Home Alone, Home Alone 2 is so good. Okay, I'm going to go I'm gonna go Scrooge. I'm going to go Die Hard. But yeah. I'm going to go with just if you want something fucking wholesome as fucking traditional I'm just going to say Santa Claus the movie like are you Dudley mother, Moore motherfucker and... I was just thinking that as well <laughs> I interrupted your wank again Die Hard Screws <laughs> and Santa Claus the movie because it's just so wholesome yeah I'm going to catch again she's not going to watch this all right it's like Donna's bought all of uh, Jessica's Christmas presents this year mm. basically um, so she's done all that but I've gone off and just bought her a shit ton of stuff for a laugh for the kid right so what was it I'm gonna, wrap, I'm gonna wrap that <laughs> oh don't even get me started i'm gonna wrap it all hide it away and then i'm gonna wait until a point where i can just bring it downstairs on christmas and put it under the tree again when jessica because jessica will like um annihilate all her presents in the morning as is her right as a child me and donna will like open presents till fucking midnight we'll do like one an hour or something you know so i'm gonna wait until that's happened so i can put all these presents under the tree just so when jessica goes what's that i can go we're going to call it Christmas 2. <laughs> she will not get the reference. <laughs> well, I'm doing shit. That's a Christmas present to me. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. John left guy. Wait, there's a se- is there a second Krampus? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Thank you for the Krampus? question, Greg. Well, there's remakes. They're pretty shit. Next question is from Mr. Will Guitar. Oh, Mr. Will. Will. Merry Christmas, sir. What's been your notable surprise movie where you've either known nothing of the movie or dreaded it, yet on watching it, Fast became one of your favourites? It's a tough question, Mr. Uh, Will, because it's one I need to think on. (laughs) Every fucking part. Kingsman. The Kingsman, yeah. I don't know why. It's just like when I first saw that trailer, I was like, I don't really want to fucking watch that. Donna made me watch it and I was like, shit, that's one of the best. Greasy I've ever Strangler. Seen. I loved it. Greasy ah, Strangler. yeah, Greasy That's a great shot. I thought Greasy Strangler was going to be so I was bad apprehensive about then... watching it. And when I did watch it, I was like, I don't even know. I, I didn't even make a single note when I was getting ready to review that film because I was in shock as to that such a film even existed. Oh, you watched that motherfucker with an open jaw, don't you? I did, yeah. yeah. And I was just yeah. like, I am making a huge mistake watching this film by myself sober with a pen and pencil making notes i'm like this is not how yeah, you watch I this made, film i made him watch it for the review i was like dude you need to watch Greasy strangler what and he's like what is it about and i'm like no you need I to mean, watch i knew what it was Greasy about strangler and we need to review it but, but yeah but wait, there, there, nothing can prepare you just wait just two seconds are you all right yeah because your eyes are like <laughs> You were just talking to me. Like, I've always loved the fact because leading up to him watching the Greasy Strangler, <laughs> there's there's no way rationally he would have actually have watched it just normally. Yeah, I think right. I changed yeah, I on that mean. day. I literally yeah. became a different person yeah. after watching that film. That's, that's what that, that film does. Yeah. Because I watched it late one night and was just like, what the Porto? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? And we just stuck it on the list. We watched it for the show. And now the Greasy Strangler is just like... It's another one of those films where I think I said such oh, in my closing. I was like, I made a mistake watching it on my own. But I have yeah, subsequently right. or since watched the film with some friends and had an absolute hoot <laughs> and a laugh the entire time. Yeah. The fact that I also knew what was coming. Yeah. And even though they had some idea of what was coming, actually Poor seeing dumb. it. But it's definitely a party film. It's well, definitely meant to be watched in I, a group so that you can I, um... share that reaction. When I watched RRR last year, yes. I said about yeah, that yeah, Bollywood, yeah, yeah. like a couple of people said to me, like, "Oh, you should watch this fucking Bollywood movie." I was like, "I probably shouldn't." I'm yeah, really not into yeah, it. yeah. And then when I, I was like, "Oh shit, this is going in my top ten of the year. This is amazing." Wow. Well, yeah. Yep. So that's definitely one. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Great question, Mister Will. It was, uh, but question. yeah, I think Greasy Strangler is is, is uh, my answer 100%. as well. <laughs> Next question is from Code Dude. What up, Code what Dude? Up, Code? <laughs> Here's a moral dilemma. Hollywood comes to oh, you shit. with a choice. They have piles of money to burn, two working brain cells, and are dead set to remake one movie, and you get to decide which one. Alien, Aliens, or The Thing from 1982. You have to pick one of the three. Which would you choose, and why? I would. Damn it, say- Code Dude, that's tough. I would go with The Thing. 
Simply because if, if they've come to me, they've got two brain cells and a shit ton of money, I can pretty goddamn uh, how, how, assert. How can... fast are you casting Wyatt Russell? No, the, the, well, <laughs> initially, like, I'm, I'm seeing if I'll I... will be like, whatever money you've got... I'm seeing if I can get John Connor <laughs> on board, and then I'm going to see who's the best guy in special effects I can get on board. Um, Writing-wise, yes, we'll probably go with Wyatt... Um, White Russell. To play McCready. Yeah. Well, yeah. To, maybe not to play McCready, but to play a guy who's happened to go back up there to mm. have a look. And they. Well, just... no, but you're remaking it. What, you're remaking re- the original. Remaking so you have to follow. Too. Okay, if she, she, yeah, so, right? so, so, so he's, so he's playing. Well, obviously, he's playing. His he's dad. playing McCready. That's the only reason uh, I want to watch that fucking B- Monarch series. Is Michael because B. Of the fact that they switched. The maybe team Michael B. Jordan as Charles? Fucking. I was. Bad to say Michael B. Jordan, honestly. Kevin Hart as Knowles. He <laughs> <laughs> walks in like, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's going down on his... Or, or, or Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Charles. Charles. And no, because Michael... he'll write something Michael... into his contract where he has to punch the thing to death. Yeah, yeah, like, no, no, he know? won't. No, no, right. Michael B. Jordan as Knowles, right? And The th- and the Rock gets to punch the thing in the face, right? But... As he goes up to face this guy, the guy turns into the thing. The Rock then stands up and goes, I'm going to take him. And as he punches the guy in the face, the guy's it face... opens the, up. The, the, the guy's nah. face a, a opens up and shatters at the same time that the fist. So the Rock thing's like, yeah, pow, I'll punch him. But then the, the whole face goes, whoop, on his arm and rips his arm off. And so you think the Rock is dead? And then later on, The Rock actually turns back up again, but it's just a thinged version of him being replicated. I'm, I'm going to say that we remake Aliens because you can just remake an action movie without spoiling anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't you, you answer can, this question. You, like, remake Alien, Alien with an all and female Aliens cast. and The Thing are three perfect movies. Absolutely. Remaking absolutely. them but, is but just I, wrong. No, but no, I think, no. I think you no. can remake... Because do you know what? It's like, it's like with the Alien sort of like, you know, the new movies that come out. If someone basically was sat there and just going, look, dude, we're, we're going to fucking remake Aliens where we're going to flood this place with Marines and Aliens, you'd probably be like, yeah, all right, sign me up. I think you can remake Aliens way easier yeah, than the could. other two because yeah, the, the suspense from the first one is like, I've I almost, I almost don't believe, I, do you know what? I, I can't answer no, this I, I, don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe that you, for the, for the, for the, for the big audience, I don't believe that the big audience can do a movie like Alien, where it's like, look, you're gonna fucking sit no, there, they, and you're gonna you're gonna wait for the payoff. Because they everyone could totally wants instant payoff these days. Mate, they can totally mean? remake Alien. Do you know what I, mean? like, I, don't, yeah. I don't think I don't think you do the suspense thing. No, anymore. no, it's you can. Be... Underwater, yeah. underwater, where Kristen Stewart proved that you could do Alien again. You just had to yeah, film it. Yeah, but it's well. not even, it it's not even well, close it? to be. It didn't do well. It's not even close yeah. to being as no, good as Alien. No, but I, I it's liked good. it. I, yeah. I liked yeah. Underwater, but yeah. It, yeah, and I thought it was similar. Female in, in stars, the same way that Life was, Alien. but I don't think it did well. It didn't know. So it's kind of like I don't think you can do the thing didn't do that. Well, well, then again, no one's been able to do Alien as well since Aliens. Like, there's been more. There's more bad Aliens movies than there are good ones. So yeah, remaking any of them, the the latter films for sure. But remaking Alien and Aliens is just like they're perfect movies for me. And the thing is, like my favorite horror movie of all time. I know. Like I. I, Can can I spend that money? So your answer to the moral dilemma is just. Fuck you, what else you got? <laughs> like, yeah, kind of right? like, what else can we remake? No, nah, put the bullet in the gun. I don't Those care. Those three, <laughs> just no. Just no. So, However, Ian like, is saying the thing, I'm saying aliens. Yeah. Gary's telling you to go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I That's am. Basically. Basically. Go basically. Basically. <laughs> but no, okay, if I had to remake one of them, if I gun to my head and piles of money to remake one of them, I still can't. That's the question, but I would get, I like the thing is, is great. Alien is great. I'm going to remake Alien. Okay. I'm going to remake Alien. You brave motherfucker. And I love Alien. Like that, that so Alien brave. is the only film With on an the all planet female cast. that I've watched four Anna times. Anna Taylor Joy is Ripley. Back oh, to back. Yes. Like, yes. That's how much Anna I love Taylor Alien. Joy. Four Angela times back to back. Fucking Sandra Bullock. Fucking, you just sign up a whole female cast it, and then have them killed off one by it, one. It's, it's, even though the set design is truly spectacular. I think it could do <clears throat> with a modern touch. I love the retro futuristic style of Alien and Aliens, mm. but I think, you know, modernize it up just a little bit. But 
also make you know modernize the characters. Even though I love the truckers in space, it's it's a perfect movie. But if I, again, I'm going to gun to my head, remake it. I choose Alien. God damn, we're moving on Force before, I, Force before I have a moment. <laughs> 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 Thank you for putting me through that torture code, dude. Yeah, it was brutal. God dang it. I thought we were friends. <laughs> 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 uh, next question is from Rio Quinn. What up, Rio Quinn? What up, bro? You got to select three classic Christmas songs, and they will be the only songs you can hear from the start of November to the start of January. Obviously, Stop the Cavalry is one of the three. Oh, I've uh, done three okay. classic Christmas songs. Because I was about to go sort of like Christmas time by I mean, Shane Pumpkins. McGowan's has passed away, so the Pogues is I was just about, there. The Pogues, Fairy Tale in New York is absolutely in there. And um, oh, I was going to say The Darkness, Don't Let the Bells End. Yeah, that's a pretty badass that's one. that's great. I don't know many Christmas songs. Um, you know. Is it Christmas songs I or Christmas like, carols? Um, classic Christmas songs. Shaking Stevens is always up there. I fucking at this. love that Shaking song Stevens because that, that, that was uh, Jessica when she was a baby. I, I, it, it, I, used to, I used to like get her ready for bed at Christmas and she'd, man, like, she'd fucking jive along to that it's song. It's going to be so sick, but fucking Cliff Richard, Mr. Tom, wine does it for me. Get the fuck out. I fucking enjoy that fucking Don't song, Don't talk dude. to me about Cliff Richard. Fuck you, Jesus man. You just Christ. fucking come up in you my know, fucking face. Honestly, like, we, were, um, we were in... The human sanctuaries the other day, and Donna's laughing her ass. I was like, "What's so funny?" And she's like, "The guy behind you looks exactly like Cl- Cliff Richard." And I was like, "I turned." And around. it was. I turned around, <laughs> and I was like, "Man, fuck you for that Millennium Prayer song, because like that, like that <laughs> okay. hurt my heart." How bad <laughs> look, that look, was. I'm not saying that the, the the whole albums are fucking greatest hits. What I'm saying is Christmas songs. Mistletoe and wine when that hits. Children oh, sing. Come on, it's right out there. Oh, Christy oh, and wine. With logs on the fire, motherfucker. Do you know what I really love? No, 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 no. You're allowed. You're allowed to fucking enjoy that. Do you know what I really love? Actually, was um, David Bowie and Bing Crosby oh, singing. Oh, pa 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 pa. that's a fucking banger. You I listen to song. my motherfucking drum, pa ra pa pa pa. I know. I, 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 I know. I love that Silent Night. Good. I think I love. You know the lyrics, the song, the melody. I think did Enya do do, do a cover of that one? Bro, sorry, oh. sorry to interrupt. But talking about your favorite, one of your favorite Christmas movies today, when me and Dylan were putting up the lights to get in a Christmas mood, I was like, "Alexa, play some Christmas songs." And so Mariah Carey went to the start. I went, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, Alexa, play, Alexa, calm your fucking tits." Play classic <laughs> Christmas songs. The song from Gremlins came on. Do you hear what I Oh, hear? I thought you meant like when the gremlins are caroling. Yeah, <laughs> no, man. The song. No, that's, just, that's a fucking great Christmas song. That's a great song, Christmas guys. song. That's a great Christmas song. I fucking love that. That's got to be a Gary classic because he loves gremlins. Oh, I love, love it. Yeah. I, I do. I love all the classic songs, to be fair. Fucking Little Drummer Boy and stuff like that. That's yeah. great. Yeah, man. Yeah, modern Christmas songs, I don't, they do nothing for me. They just... Irritate the the, sh- the, la- the last me? great modern Christmas song I like was um, Corey Taylor where he's like Mary f- the like oh Mary yeah. Xmas. That, yeah that was a fucking banger that was a good song. I mean I don't know I, I love the spirit of Christmas I get festive and everything else but when I'm in town and Christmas songs are playing constantly it does my head in I, I seriously the longer I'm in there it's like an endurance test Listen. get in get ready to get done and get out because I can't take you, you it. You can't yeah. handle people. I, I can't. I can't. People on Christmas songs at the same listen, time. Listen to that song from Gremlins and just imagine yeah. that thing spinning in the mincer. Yeah. you get for it. Perfect. <laughs> Cheers for the difficult question real quick. <laughs> Great question. Oh, no, no, these are getting tough. Uh, last question right now. Oh, wait. No, I, I'll do a refresh because this happened last time. Just in case. This might be the penultimate. Well, we got because we got, we got, tw- this we is got true. a taxi ride in this like is true. Okay, no, this is, <laughs> this is the last question. Of 2023. 2023. And it comes from wow. Mongo Mongo 21. Mongo. What up, Mongo? If you could go back to any past movie set and take part in the film, what film would you choose? Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good pull. <laughs> Emmanuel where? <laughs> she, she, she went a lot of places. Are you just going to no, the original? No, no, no. The, the, the swimming pool sequence from Wild Things. <laughs> With oh, Denise dude. Richards you know what? and Campbell. I'd love to have been on the film set of The Shining. How much fun would that be? What, the old woman in oh, the back? Oh, my God. That's gross, <laughs> man. Not that day. Not that day. <laughs> <laughs> without killing, just without killing my dick. I'd, but I'd love to that be on the set. Or just like things. any Tarantino flick, man. You fucking get to be on the set of Power like... Power Station, um, fucking aliens, man. 
That would be great, but just any any fucking any really tactile set would be the one that you'd want. Yeah, I think you'd be like, oh, I want to be on the fucking, um, I want to be on the set of um, Endgame. Green, man. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking it's green. green. Set. That's all you're yeah. looking at. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah something tactile. For sure. My my first answer, my first was uh, the first thing was I want to be in the the mall of Dawn of the Dead. Yes. I want to be in the cabin nice. in Evil Dead. Yeah. And I want to be on the Nostromo set during Alien. Oh. And I want to be in the Arctic with McCready and friends during the thing. Those sets. Because they were real sets, real locations, uh, they, they would be pretty awesome. Like so no, he just he just said McCready and friends in, in, in the article. You just wrote saying, that sequel. I just wrote, <laughs> I just wrote the, the entire fucking opening of Friends, but the thing style. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> but no, I, I like oh, I, because I, you know, the Evil Dead. I, I'm really passionate about those movies. You know, I've read the books, the making of, the documentaries, the the, the commentary tracks, and the the trials and tribulations of no budget filmmaking, mm. uh, and how difficult and taxing it was on their friendships making that movie. Like being there with them and being a part of that, like the connections that they made while making that film. Like the strength of that is still going on today. Like they're still collaborating and working yeah. with each other, and they know they can do anything after they've been through that. Like uh, so, to share in that would be, uh, I think, truly, truly special. Cornell trilogy would be pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working yeah, with uh, Edgar I mean, Wright, to, it's, Simon Pegg, and it's not far. We could go. True. Like, yeah. know, like, <laughs> yeah, we we yeah. could go to it. Like you know, yeah. it's not far away. Yeah. Absolutely. Is that us? Any more? No, I think I'm good. I'm three beers. <laughs> we got, we got three and a half day. hours I think we, we fucking worked this shit Sorry, I think we did I'm, I'm all the alcohol worked us up I, three I beers know. in like, taxi on the way <laughs> but this was home time fucking I'm sorry, yeah. uh, steer, steer, uh, pike grown. I don't see the question in the queue, so I do apologise. Uh, all questions that do get used by the channel points will make it into next the next fucking podcast. podcast. Check it on there. But we'll yeah, be back in the can... new year. We are going to be counting down our best picks of the year of 2023 next month, and of course, we will be here to answer all your questions then. So I do just want to say. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. He's finally said it. It took him three hours. Three and a half did, hours. To say it. fucking Merry Christmas. <laughs> but I wanted to make it sincere and real. It was, dude. And you made it. That's, that's, that's the point. Merry now, Christmas, like, That's the Merry point. Christmas. Merry Christmas, dude. <laughs> Let me get my drink. Hit me up. I'm all, I'm all <laughs> pretty out. So fist bump. I'll fist bump that fist bump. bump. Thank you guys for listening in and checking out this podcast. We hope you had fun listening in. We, As I said, we will be back in the new year counting down our best picks of the year from films, TV shows, games, and moments in our lives. All of these are going to be Anna Taylor-Joy related. Oh, <laughs> man. Why We're not recounting your wank bank of the decade, yeah? <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's... Do you know what? When we're really hard up for a fucking crit, for a fucking podcast yeah, subject, it's it? like Ian's wank. Ian's wank bank is absolutely going. Oh, I'm in. sorry. Just because you guys pick, speak sausage festival up, I like this guy. I like that guy. I'm like, man, what, what, what are we all? Hundred percent, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We're going full fucking wank bank for the next one. It's amazing. Cheers, everyone, for all the support all year long. Whether you've been lurking, chatting cheering uh gift subs and bits uh during the streams it means so much to have you here listening on whatever device you are and uh carrying us with you in your earbuds you know yeah. it, it means a lot it really does so we hope you have a wonderful Comfort. rest of the year and we will see you in january the the for the next show thank you so much everyone see you next time merry christmas love you faces <laughs>